All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are watching from. My name is uh, Daniel Ochu. Uh, I'm a certified human rights consultant. And I'm here with uh, tell us your name, please. Imabon Love it Sunday. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to give Inabong Lovett Sunday um, just 30 minutes to summarize her story. You know? um, after summary of her story, then we'll go ahead with the case to, for, for further investigations you know, for what you're going to tell us. So um, Inabong, before you start, I want to know okay. that uh, you are wanting to pledge that you are going to tell us nothing but the truth. And yes, uh, if you find out that you lied to us, I'm going to use this against you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, tell us, can you pledge that anything I'm going to say here is nothing but the truth? Then you can start. Thank you. Yes, yeah, anything I'll say here would be the truth, nothing but the truth. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead, please. Take your time. Take enough time. Tell us the story you say you want to tell us. Okay. Okay, sir. Um, it's it's all started in um 2018, June, where I used to stay before because by then I used to live alone. So I was in, in here in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. So where I used to live then, I had um my neighbors, there were couples who died two years apart. The wife died um, 216, the husband died 217. They were my neighbors and they had kids. They had a 14 year old daughter and a seven year old son. So after the wife died, the man was actually going through a lot. And then the next year he also died. Mm. The man has a son before he got married to his wife, before the two other children. So the kids were left, were left with the stepbrother. So after the both parents had died, the both family from the mother and the father rejected these two children. They said they didn't want to have anything to do with them. So the children were left with the stepbrother who actually was not doing well he did not have a good source of income for himself. And being that we were neighbors and me but some other neighbors, so we suggested that, okay, the girl is old enough to live with someone. Maybe they, because she was yet to finish her senior secondary as of then. So we kind of suggested, isn't it okay you take your sister to live with someone? Maybe they can send her to school or pay her if they wouldn't want her to be going to school in their house which everyone agreed. And then there's this agent in that area, in LLM where we used to stay in Port Harcourt. We contacted her, she took the girl to a woman. The woman was married, she had a son. So the day we actually, me, the stepbrother, one, of, one other of our neighbor and the woman, the agent, we took the girl to this woman's house. Before then, these children was having some kind of, um, skin rashes all over their body. We actually did not know what was the cause. So we just thought it was normal skin rashes that anybody would have. So when we got to the woman's house, I remember she asked, what um, is this um, rashes on her skin? We said we didn't know. So she made us knew, know that anytime she takes um, someone to help her in the house, she normally takes them for tests in case they had any sickness or whatsoever. We said it was fine. We left her house and we left the girl with her. A week later, she called us to tell us that, she called the stepbrother to tell him that, are you aware that your sister is HIV positive? Mm. So the stepbrother came to tell all of us, the neighbors, and we were shocked. Being that all this while, the, the seven year old, the little boy was living with us, the neighbor. So anybody that has food to give it to the child, you have anything to help out to give it to the child. So we became scared as normal human, we became scared. So everybody started distancing themselves. 
So we like, okay, if your sister is actually HIV positive, that means that's the same thing that's wrong with your brother because the boy's own was actually worst. He was having pores all over his body, his head, there was sore everywhere. If he scratched it, blood would be coming out. So we became distant. Yes. So he took him for a test at Obio Cottage. This was in June 2018. 2018, okay. 2018, and it was confirmed that the boy was also HIV positive, which was already developing to AIDS. Yeah. So the stepbrother brought the boy back and told us, honestly, everybody became distant. If you have something, you just push it in the plates, give it to the boy. Nobody wanted him entering their house anymore, which was, we were humans. So the brother himself felt isolated because of that and everything. So one morning, it was on a Friday, he just woke up. We saw him dressing up the brother and the little boy and took him out. We're like, ah, Godwin, where are you taking your brother to? He said, it's not our business. And we didn't ask again. And we noticed that he came back that very day without the brother. And everybody were like, where's your brother? Where's your brother? He didn't say anything. He didn't tell any of us. Okay, we forgot about it now and move on with our lives. Now, the girl, the woman said, According to what the woman said, she is HIV positive, but it wasn't a death sentence that he would, she would take her to the hospital, get her treated and get her drugs. So we shouldn't worry about the girl. We should be worried about the boy, which was okay. So everybody moved on with their lives. A week later on a Tuesday, I just came back from work. It was in the morning around 11, 12 in the morning. And then Everybody were just outside me and my neighbors. And then we saw two people walk into the compound and the boy was following them. So we were shocked. We were like, oh, this boy is back. And uh -uh, who are these people? So they came and he actually brought the people that he came with to where we were all sitting. And they started asking, do you people know this boy? We say, yes, they used to stay here. You know the story now we told. So they now told us they were police officers. It was a man and a woman. They are police officers. This boy was abandoned in OPM church OPM at Alu. Church. According to the boy, he of, was abandoned. What is forming of OPM? Omega Power Ministry. At which branch? The headquarters at Alu. In Patakot. Yes, Patakot. Alu Patakot, yes. Okay. So that um, according to the boy, he was brought there by his stepbrother who asked him to wait for him, but mm. never came back. So now that's what they, why they asked this boy where he used to stay. Thank God the boy was able to find out um, and tell them the name of where they used to stay before and they brought him there. It's because they as the police, that the church brought the boy to report the case at the police station. And that the church has been asking they take the boy to orphanage, which they have done, and the boy was rejected because of the way his body, physical body was, his skin and everything. The, the boy was rejected, different in orphanage. So now that the OPM general of Asia wants to treat the boy by name Apostle Chibuza Gifts Chinyere, okay. wants to treat the boy in the hospital. He wants to get the boy admitted and pay for his hospital bill in uni um, University um, Portacourt, UPTH, no, no. Portacourt, University of Teaching Hospital in Portacourt. But the hospital does not provide food for the patient. So they are here because they are looking for the brother he talked about so he can be bringing food for the boy. Mm. We said, okay, no wonder that after the day he took this boy out and came back, we haven't set our eyes on him and we don't know where he is. They waited, we brought out some contacts, we knew, started calling, his line wasn't going. So they said, anywhere, since this is where the brother is to stay, that they have also been exposed to the sickness because since the boy has been rejected in different orphanages, that the boy has been sleeping in the police station. So they will be leaving the boy there in the compound. So whenever the brother comes back, he should take care of him. And this boy was coughing all this while blood would be coming out of his mouth, his mm -hmm. nose, everywhere he was scratching. I felt pity for the boy because he could have been my younger brother. Mm -hmm. 
So I was like, and I said, okay, excuse me, ma. What if somebody that's not related to this child in any way wants to be bringing food for him? Since food was the issue, who will be bringing food for him? Wants to be bringing the food for him in the hospital. Will they accept? They said, yes. Do I want to do it? I say, yes, I can do it. They never told me anything about payment or providing the food. So they said, okay, if I can do it, I should follow them. I followed them in because they came with a taxi. I followed them with the child and the two police officers. We went back to the police station at Alu River State. When we got to the police station, I met with the DPO, who also asked me how I knew the boy. And I told him what I know. We are not related, but the parents were my neighbors, but they are late. So the DPO said he would put a call to the general overseer, which he did. And the general overseer requested to speak with me on the phone. General I've never Vassia, been to with... Who's the, who's the general overseer that won't speak with you? The gen general overseer, the pastor himself, Apostle Chibuz or Gift Senior. Okay. He requested to speak with me on the phone. Before now, I've never been to his church. I only hear about the good things he does. I'm not his member. I've never been there before. So I just spoke to him over the phone and he asked me how I knew the boy and I explained. He said, okay, he will get back to us. He dropped the call. Like some minutes later, he sent a number to the DPO that the DPO should give me the number and attach a police officer with me to take the boy to River State Secretariat that he had made some call and somebody would take the boy from us there. We got to River State Secretariat and we called this number several times. Nobody was speaking. So we got tired, me and the police officer. When we were about going back, the number called back and said, who are you? And we explained, the person said he had already left his office. We should take the boy to orphanage in Borokri, Port Harcourt, which we did that same day. When we got to the orphanage, the boy was rejected in front of us. Oh my God. We dropped the boy and wanted to leave. The orphanage was locked. They locked the gates and said we would not go out except we go with the boy. We started calling, called the DPO and everything. So at that point, I got angry and I said, I don't want to do it again because um, the sickness was increasing. Whatever was doing happening to him was getting worse. I was in the same cab with him. He keeps coughing and he was already having tuberculosis and different stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was coughing and I was there with him. I was being exposed. So mm -hmm. I said, my only reason for coming, my only reason for coming was to be bringing food to him in the hospital. Absolutely. I did not sign up for taking him to orphanages and other places. I don't want to do it again because if in the middle of this thing, this boy die, I'll be held responsible because I'm the only one currently that might know few people that knows the boy. Mm. I said I didn't want to do it again. We came back to the police station and I left. This was on a Saturday, I left. Then breaking the next day, the Sunday, the DPO kept calling me, calling me, calling me. I said, sir, I don't want to do okay, this thing again. He said, DPO, no, DPO from there. That the pastor has been calling him to Sorry. bring me back Sorry. DPO to from do where? everything possible. DPO from where calling you? Which of the DPOs? The DPO at Alu Police Station. Police Station. Do you know yes. name? by name who? Ajayi okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So he kept calling me. Which year? That Which he year? had told. Is this December 2018? Yes, this is 2018. This was all in June 2018. So he said, the general overseer said he should bring me back. So I also had to open up to my neighbors and I told them, look at what is going on with this child. And they're like, since they are now the one calling you back and you've already said you want to do it, go and hear the man out now and see how it will be. So I came back. And then when I came back, I was taken to his church, the headquarters for the first time. I'm, like, I'm on a call, okay. Go and play, go and play. So, I want to show you his face. Don't, don't show his face. So, is, is the child right? Is the child yes, the don't, 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 show face, don't show his face. Okay, don't sorry, me. make it cool. I mean, please make it cool. So, 
that was how I was taken to his church for the first time. We met him in the church. And then he asked me, how do you know the boy? I said, this is how I know him. He said, okay, fine. What are you doing? I said, I'm working for somebody. Who is asking you? The, the, the pastor himself, Apostle Chibuzo. Okay. Apostle Chibuzo. Okay. So he said, okay, how much are you being paid? Like I said, then I was working Saturday, Sunday for a doctor in UPTH. I, work, I worked in her house. By name, who? I think I can't remember her name, but I know her address and everything. Okay. Yes. So you were working as what? I was working as um um I cook for her, I also clean her house. Okay. Yes. So I said, I'm doing this work Saturday, Sunday for this woman, and she pays me twelve thousand. Mondays to Fridays, I also do my business. I used to sell tea. Does this Chinese tea. I sell it for truck drivers at Slaughter in Port Harcourt. Okay, I told him this is what I do. He now said, okay, what if I said, um, that means where do you stay? I said, I stay in Elelewo. Now, Elelewo and where the hospital is, is very far apart. So he said, where you're staying is very far. Sorry, sir. Um, my son. Did I stop that? Come on. Close my door. Lock it. Close my door. So he now said, what if I get you an accommodation close to the hospital and I'll be paying you 20000 Will you be taking care of the child full time? Truth be told, at the same time, I was having accommodation problems. So him offering me an accommodation came as a miracle. Right. which I appreciated and I accepted. I said, okay, sir, that will be okay. Thank you very much. So now that was, and then he now said, he will also be given 20,000 for the child's upkeep and feeding. I said, okay, which he always did. So we left his office that day. The next day, the boy was taken to the hospital, though there were still some, Challenges that came back, that came up, we left, came back on a Tuesday, and the boy was admitted. He gave out money. The boy was admitted. Wait, Treatment started. Okay, you from challenges, what do you mean by challenges, challenges that came okay. up? Okay. After meeting him on Sunday, we, when he said, by Monday, I should take the boy to UPTH, that he has called the MD of the hospital. Oh, okay. So when I get to the hospital, I should also call the MD. He sent me the number. I should also call the MD and let the boy be taken care of, be treated. At the end of the day, when the boy is discharged, he will clear the bill. So I took the boy to the hospital on Monday without any money. They didn't give me any money for the hospital bills. So when I got there after the consultation and everything, which was towards evening, I got to find out that hospital doesn't work like that. That was my first time in the hospital. Right. It doesn't work like that. So I had to come back with the boy. Yeah, okay. I came back with the boy, I told the DPO, look at what they said, that I would need money for this boy to be admitted, get some things ready for the doctors and everything. And the DPO called him. He said, okay, okay, the boy that he called the MD. The DPO told him the MD did not answer her call. So he now instructed that the DPO should send a policewoman to his accountant to go and get money for me to take to the hospital, which the DPO did. So they got, went to his accountant and got money, and then they brought it back. By Tuesday, I took the boy back to the hospital, oh. and he was finally admitted. The treatment started. I was always there. I would go there in the morning because... The boy's case was very critical, so he was being isolated. No. So most of the time, the doctors didn't want me in the room where the boy was, except they were there. So they would just tell me what to do. You have to wear your gloves, your nose marks, and everything before you get inside there. So most times, if they need me to go and run a test, they will get his sample. They will ask me to wait outside. They will mm. go get his sample, bring it out, and I take it to the lab, pay the money, and stuff like that. So the boy spent about a month and two weeks, or so about two months in the hospital. Mm. 
he paid hugely I hope for he it. He survived. The boy survived, right? Yes, he survived. He was okay. He was treated. What's the name of this boy? Ekemini Christopher. Okay, thank you. How old, yes. is, how, how old is he? I think he should be about 13, 14 right now. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, that was it. Truth be told, he spent money in that hospital. He did a lot for the child, took care of him. The boy wasn't lacking and everything. So now, forward to when the boy was discharged, they came the question, where is he going to stay? The doctor started asking, where is the child going to stay? I said, I'm not aware of that. I'll get back to the people taking care of him because at some point, the hospital were aware that the boy is being taken care of by OPM pastor. Mm. So I said, I'll get back to them. And I came back, went to the DPO. I said, sir, the boy is about to be discharged and they're asking where he will be staying and who he will be staying with. And the DPO called the pastor and he said, the boy should come and stay with me. The accommodation I was given wasn't a flat. Okay, it wasn't a step. A, you were given accommodation by the pastor? Yes, by the pastor. Where? In Alu, okay. River State. Okay. It was close to the hospital. Okay. Now, the accommodation I was given was not a flat. It was not a safe con. It was a one room. No. And then he asked that the boy should come and stay with me. I was scared and I told the DPO, I don't think I can do something like this. And the DPO said he has tried talking to him that it wasn't okay. And he kept saying the boy should stay with me, that I'm the one taking care of him. At some point I said, fine, okay. I went back to the doctors and I told them about it. They frowned at it, but then they were like, it's actually not a death sentence. It doesn't mean you contact it. You just have to be careful. So they started telling me the things to do and the things not to do. Mm. At the end of the day, the boy was discharged and he came to stay with me in that house. I was okay. taking care of him. He was still paying me. He was sending money for the boy's upkeep and everything. Now, remember, the boy's sister is somewhere. So I thought about it. The person she is staying with, might or might not be guaranteed. Tomorrow she might get angry and decide to throw the boy out. Mm. So I went to the DPO. I said, okay, sir, please, can you help me talk to the pastor if he can also take care of the boy's sister? Mm. So the DPO said that was a good idea. So the DPO reached out to him, which he accepted. Yes, dear. Tim bread. What? Tell her I said, let her cook it for you. So he accepted that the boy should be brought, that the girl should be brought. I contacted the agent that took her there. I said, please, can you help me call that woman that um, I would like to take the girl back? I wouldn't want the girl staying with her again. Mm. Just as I was thinking, when the agent reached out to the woman, she got angry and everything provoked the the girl's um, neutroviral drug, she took it away from her and said she got it with her money and everything. So the girl came out. I also told the DPO everything that happened. Apostle still gave money for the girl to be taken to the hospital, but she was not admitted because hers was not critical. Oh, Don't look. God. She'll do it. Stop. Amen. Please do it, please. Okay, go. Cool. Okay. So... He gave money. The girl, we went to the hospital, got her drugs, did some tests and everything. The both of them were living with me in that house. Mm -hmm. We had neighbors. Everybody can always go and verify. I never treated them for one day badly. We live like they were my younger ones. Mm -hmm. And throughout our stay for one year and in that compound till we left, nobody knew that they were HIV positive. Yeah. Because they get to live with other children, play around and everything. So fast forward to when oh, this was, everything happened in June, July, August. I think July was when the boy was discharged. August, September. I was in the house. The medical um, director of OPM then. By name who? Um, um, Dr. Mrs. Ndibo. Okay. Is Ndibo. She works in OPM medical department. Okay. 
when this boy was in the hospital, she used to visit the boy. Okay. So this woman called me and said, Love it, where are you? I said, Ma, I'm in the house. She said, Okay, get ready and take a taxi. Meet me in so 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 place. Apostle called me and said, I should bring you and the children to his house. To Apostle's house. To Apostle's house. Okay. So that was how I went, I got to his house for the very first day. Apostle by name. Apostle, Apostle by name, I am um, Apostle Chibuzo Gifting. Okay. So we went to his house and um, he took us out for shopping. He said he wanted to buy things for the boy, took him out, bought him whatever he wanted that day. So that wasn't the first time he kept taking him out. He did a lot. They were registered in school. They started attending school. So at some point, when the students started going to school, I was always alone in the house. So I asked if I could get a job to do while the children are in school, since I wasn't good at always staying in the house. So they said I can join um, the sanitation department in church, which I did. I joined and I go to work every day. I wasn't being paid separately. It was still the same 20,000, so I was working there. So times... So many times he would call because at some point when we started going to his house, he would take us out, bring us back, and we'll go back to our own house. So at some point, he got my number. So how, there was a how day. Did you, how did he you get your number? He asked the DPO. I was in the house, my own house, the house we were staying. The DPO called me and said, um, love it. Daddy just called me now, which is Apostle Chibuzo, and said, I should send him your number. I have sent it to him, so be expecting his call. He said he's going to call you. Okay. And at the same time, he called. Since I was expecting his call already, so when the call came, I knew it was him. But I did not have his number before now. So he called. I picked up the phone. Hello, Daddy. I was excited, at least the normal Mm. Bill. So he was like, where are you? I said, Daddy, I'm in the house. Because that's what everybody knows him as. We all call him Daddy. So he said, okay, get a taxi, bring the children. All of you should come to my house. I want to take all of you for shopping. There are other children in my house too. So we got to his house and he took us out for shopping. I wasn't the only one. There were other children. There were plenty. There were much that day. I think about 15, 16 of us. He took everybody out went to the eateries, the shopping, and everywhere, bought us things. So because we went to a lot of places that particular day, we came back very late. And when we are coming back, we always got, get to his house first before everybody would dispatch to their different houses. So when we came back that day, it was late. And he said he cannot start telling his driver to go and drop all of us that it was late. So we can sleep over till the next day we can go in the morning. So we slept over. He said, that, he said that by himself? Yes, he said that himself. Okay. So the next morning, that all the children, everybody that was that were there that day. So we slept over. The next day, what I had in mind was that the next day, everybody would just wake up, carry whatever they bought for you and start going to your house. But then before we woke up, they called us to come and eat. The food was ready. We went to eat. He came down to eat with us which is something very good about him. He doesn't select, or oh, this one is this, or I can't eat with this. No, he doesn't do that. He came down to eat with us, which actually made us happy. So while everybody were eating, we're also discussing and talking. Everybody were laughing. So I think a particular child actually asked him and said, so daddy, you stay in this big house, only you. He said, yes, now it's only me that is staying, or you, put, you want to come and stay. The child was like, yes, now nah, I would like to come and stay. So it was just a normal talk everybody was talking about. So he was like, okay, if you people want to stay, you can come and stay. Okay, so he lives alone. Yes. What about, he his, what about his kids? Outside, outside his workers. What about his kids? He has a daughter with his wife, and the child is, with, is in Canada with his wife. Oh, the wife lives in Canada while he lives alone yes. in the... Yes. Okay. Yes. How, many, how many rooms? How many rooms is he staying? 
I think it's it's about a seven, it's like a mansion, about seven bed or eight, eight. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So he now said, if the people want to stay, you can stay. That was how staying in his house started. Okay. So at that point, him asking us to stay in his house, I don't think there was anybody that would have rejected it. Right. Because we all saw him. He was the father every child would have wanted to have. Every child would want to have him as a father. He was good. He would provide for you and you would not lack around him. Mm -hmm. So we all accepted. Mm -hmm. We said, okay. And we were excited and happy. Yes. Sorry, go and tell him to, him to do it for you. Okay. So that was it. We started staying in his house. He was like, okay, when you're done eating, the driver can take you to your different houses. You just get one or two things. That was it. So we came back and started staying there. This was around October, November in 2018. 2018, okay. Yes. So we go to church with him. Come back from church with him. You're living in his house. You cannot just carelessly walk out of the gates. He has to be aware you are living. The securities will always confirm from him before you're permitted to leave the gates. Okay. So we were always inside. If anybody wanted something, he would give someone money. You go with the driver to go buy it and come back. Okay. So that was it. And then while um, we were still there, it was the day I went to church and I met this guy by name Chinedu Nweke. So Chinedu, um, normal, he's an usher in the church. So we've I've known him. I've known him for a while after I started attending the church. Sometimes we just greet. So this particular day, he actually walked up to me and like greeted me. So we just talked. And then it was like, he has been seeing me all this while and he actually liked me or something. I was like, I just laughed because to me, it was funny. I was like, okay, no problem. So he asked for my contact to him. So we started talking after a while. Network. He said he said he liked me and he would want to marry me. I told him that very day, no, 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 please don't talk about marriage. I stay in Daddy's house and Daddy has already promised to send me to school. So if you're talking about marriage, you have to wait. Maybe when I'm back from school or whatever, then we can talk about marriage, not now. He now say, eh, but that doesn't stop us from being friends. I say, okay, if it is friends you want, no problem. He said he can also support me while I'm in school. So I said, fine, we can just be friends. And that was it. So we talk, most times we talk on the phone. Then if I come to church, we just see, and that was it. So towards this December, the Christmas and everything, I was supposed to write my Wayek, which um, Apostle, the pastor um, um, said, when the registration started, I should meet the church welfare to register me for WAEG, which I went to them, but I did not get any response. As at this time, Apostle was outside the country. It's not like I did not have his number to call him, but I had so much respect for him. So I never see myself calling him for whatever reason. So I was not able to call him and I did not. But I went to welfare, they asked me to go to the school I want to register and bring the bill, which I did, but they never responded to me. And I let it be. After the Christmas, January, Apostle was back to Nigeria and asked no, that we come back. This was towards um, December, November, December that he traveled. He came back when? I think he came back that same December. Okay. Towards Christmas. Yes, towards Christmas. Okay. So when he came back, he called all of us. We can always come back to his house. So now, you see, during the period he traveled, I missed registering for Wayek, and it was closed already. Right. So the normal human being, I was just like, okay, if I couldn't get the school because i know that missing to register for work that means to take another one year 
before you can get it. And even if, if you're applying for school outside the country, you cannot do it without Swayek. Right. Okay, so I was like, people still get married and still go to school. Okay, since I missed the Wayek, okay, maybe I can just tell this guy, if he's actually serious, he can go ahead with the marriage. So after the Christmas, I told this to the guy. I also told Apostle, Apostle Chibuzo, about this guy. This was in January 20. Uh, we network issue. We let's wait for her to reconnect. Okay. Sorry, the call came into my phone, so I dropped it. Okay. 2019, January. Yes, this was in January 2019. I told Apostle about this guy. He mm. said, wow, that was good. Bring him. Let me pray for both of you. I took him to his office. It was on a Sunday in the church, and he prayed for us. He asked him some questions, which the guy answered, and that was it. So this guy had followed me to my place back home to see my dad nothing was paid nothing was done but he yeah, actually so dad. sorry so i want to understand is he a biological dad no he's my grandfather okay but because he, he told me you're not fan right yes okay. he's my grandfather he actually he's the one that raised me ever since i was small okay. so i see him as my father yes what year did their parents die my mom died 2016, January. Okay. Yes. How old were you then? I think 2016, I should have been about 18 or so. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So, he met my dad, collected list. He didn't pay anything. We mm. came back to Portacourt, which Apostle was aware. This was in January. Mm. So, and meanwhile, throughout this January, I was still living in Apostle's house mm. with other children. We were living there. So while this guy was busy planning about thinking about the marriage with his people, I was in Apostle's house. with doing our thing, living our life. Everything was okay. There was no issues. But I think so many, every time, children started increasing because some mothers will come to beg him, please, they have four children and they are not well to do if he can help with one or two. And he doesn't, he doesn't know how to reject. So he's just like, okay, you can let one of your child join the children in my house. So you see the children started increasing in the house mm -hmm. that were staying in the house. So that's how everything was going. Until towards March, getting to April, this, there was a day I slept. Everything was okay while we were in his house. He took care of us. We never lacked. He was good. Mm. So there was a day everyone had gone to sleep. All of us had gone to sleep. I had also gone to sleep. That particular morning, I woke up to, I followed him on Facebook as of then. He was my Facebook, he was my Facebook friend. But there was nothing like chats. We never had a WhatsApp chat or Facebook or whatsoever. No, so, sorry, don't worry. So I woke up one morning. And then when I woke up, I pick up my phone. The normal way you wake up. Sorry. Nothing, nothing. So I pick up my phone. The normal way you pick up your phone, put on your data. And then if you've had message over the night, you start seeing it. So I picked up my phone when I woke up that morning and then I put on my data and I was getting messages. So a particular message got my attention. This message came with this picture and it was the picture, it was the same picture as his profile picture then on Facebook. Who, who, who is that? Apostle Chibuzo. Okay. So I was like, ah, could daddy send me a message in the night? Oh, let me see what it is. So I click on the message. At first, I thought maybe because I know so many people use these pictures for their profile picture. So when I clicked on it, it took me to his page. Then I came back to the message. 
And what was there was similar to today, we need to talk. That was the content of the message. Are you and I was the, like, are you remember the, the date the, the message was sent? Is it possible? This was, I can't remember the date, but this was between March, April 2019. Okay, was this sent to the, the same Facebook you're using now or, or what? No, no. That my Facebook account was hacked a long time ago. Okay, okay. Yes. So he now um sent me that message. So when I saw that message, in my mind I was like, why did he have to send me a message when once this morning I'll still get to see him and everything? But I didn't think about it that much and I did not reply to that message. So I just let it be by morning when everybody had woken up, mm. freshened up, and everyone gets to see. So normally when the children are done eat, taking their breakfast, they are always with him. So sometimes they are with him in his room. So when I was done with what I was doing that morning, I also went to his room. I greeted him. He answered me. And I was like, Daddy, it's not. I didn't hide to say it to him. The children were there, and I said it. That I saw your message. You said I should see you. I hope I did not do anything wrong. So he actually signaled for me to be quiet. He did that? Yes. Okay. And inside me, I wasn't a child. So I felt somehow about that. But I still did not want to think much because of who he is. And then he now asked the children, who wants to swim? Mm. Everybody were like, me, 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 I want to swim. So he now said, okay, all of you can go and swim. So swimming pool in his house. Join... Yes, there's a swimming pool in his house. So I had to join the children. I say, ah, me too, I want to swim. Or I joined the children to leave. And he was like, everybody except Lovett. That's you. Yes. Mm. Sorry, sorry. Amen. Go, try to give you biscuits. Mm. Okay, she'll give it to you, okay. So he was like, everybody except love it. And I stayed back. At some point I felt scared. And then the children left. He asked me to sit. At this point, it was just me and him in his room. I felt somehow, and I asked him, ah, daddy, this one is only me and you. I hope nothing is wrong or did I do anything wrong. He was like, no, don't be scared. So he asked me to sit, and I did. He asked me to switch off my phone. I was still feeling somehow because I wasn't understanding. Yeah. Be like, before that day, there has never been any sign whatsoever that I have never behaved in any bad way whatsoever to him in the house. So... To me, I felt somehow, but then I had to sit. And then he was just looking at me, looking at me. I was like, Daddy, why are you looking at me? Is there a problem? Did I do anything wrong? He said, no, that he wanted to talk to me. I said, okay. He now started talking. He was saying different things in parables, saying different things. I now said, because the way more he was talking, I was feeling scared. I was not scared, not like maybe I haven't heard those words before. I was scared because it was coming from him. From words like what? Can you just example? Okay. He said, the first thing he said was that uh, he wants to talk to me, but that he wants to make an instance. That let us say that I always eat banana whenever I am done eating. I always eat, they will give me banana to eat. So after a while, they stopped giving me this banana. So one day after so many years, I now see this banana from somebody and I want to eat it. But I cannot buy this banana. But I really want this banana. That's if I find myself in such situation, that what will I do? Who is saying this thing? Yes. Who that has stopped that. Please. He said, if I find myself in such, such situation, what will I do? Who is saying this? Apostle Chibuzo. Okay. And I you, said. And you were the only one there. It was just me and him in the room. In the private room? Sorry? In the bedroom. 
Yes, in his bedroom. Okay. In his bedroom. Come stay with Auntie Mary, okay? Okay. So, this was in his bedroom. And um, I was like, I told him, if I was in that situation, I've seen the banana I want to eat, but I cannot buy it. I'll simply ask the person that is with banana to give it to me. He now said, okay, that what if it will be very, very difficult for that person to give it to me or the person might reject me, but I really want it. That we, I said, I just have to beg first. Since I can't buy it, I just have to beg first. How so old, he kept- How old were you then? I think I was 18 then. 18 years, okay. Yes. So I kept asking, he kept asking question based on it. So at some point, I was getting frustrated because I did not want to assume where he was going to. I now asked him, I said, Daddy, please, the question is too much. Tell me what it is. Like, is there something you want to say you're not able to say or something? Just say it. Let me hear. He now said, okay, that um, he wants me to do something for him. This thing it to be very difficult for me to do it. But he knows that if I want to do it, I can do it. So at that point, he was not shifting somewhere else. I was like, Daddy, you, I've not seen you beg somebody for help before. So if you ever need help, I don't think anybody will reject you from giving you help because you've always helped everybody. He now said, okay. Okay, now that's okay. Let him tell me what it is. That what if he asks me to go into a relationship with him? That what will I say? At that point, my assumption, everything that was in my head came to the conclusion and everything. I was confused. I didn't know what to answer, not because of what he said, but because it was coming from him. I was already sweating. There was AC in the room, but I was sweating and I was scared at the same time. So I was like, I don't understand. But daddy, you know, there is somebody I want to get married to and you are aware. So why are you actually asking me to do something like this? Why will you ask me to do something like this? What will I tell him? He said, you don't have to tell him. He doesn't have to know. You just keep it between us. I was like, uh -uh. even if you're asking me to go into a relationship with you, what kind of relationship exactly? He said, I should come on. I should stop talking like I'm a child. Why am I talking like I don't know what he, I said, no, I don't want to assume. You have to say what you want. So what kind of a relationship are you talking about? He said, okay, since I want him to say it, that he is actually looking for a sexual relationship. I said, daddy, you're a pastor. Oh, God, yes. By name. He said, daddy, Apostle Chibuzo. Okay, allegedly. Yes. Okay. He said that after all, he's a man. He has flesh and blood running in his vein. We'll in my this, head. He will send this to you. Yes. In my head, I was trying to comprehend like where this whole idea or whatever it was was coming from. So I told him, I said, what if I say no? What if I say no? I want to say no. I don't want to do it. He said, just know that you cannot say no. You know me already. I do not take no for an answer. In fact, he got angry at that moment and said, why do you even think you can say no? You can't say no. I cannot take no for an answer. Who, who, who do you even think you are to want to say no to me? People, you do know how many ladies that, that are at my beck and calls, but it's just because I can't go to outside to start doing nonsense. I cannot do this because of who I am, this one, a general of herself. I'm bringing myself down to ask you for something like this and you're saying no. Who do you think you are? You cannot say no. I was like, wow. But I still want to know what if I say no, what to come with it? He said, in that case, be ready to leave my house. And if you're leaving my house, don't think that I will let you go just like that. 
because I know people will start asking you because people know I like you very well and that you are my daughter. So if you leave my house without you committing any crime, people will start asking questions. And I know you will talk. So if you leave my house, don't think I will just let you go like that. To me, that was a threat. It was a threat right. to me. Allegedly. If it's what he said, is a threat. Yes. Yes. So I couldn't think, I don't know if I should say I thought about this whole thing. I could not think about it. I just told him that, please, that I wanted to sleep. This thing was, a, was on a Saturday evening. I told him, please, I needed to sleep. I've heard you, and I will think about it. I remember the month. Sorry? I remember the month and the, and the year. This was in 2019, between March and April. OK. Yes. I left his room that day. He was calling me back, and I left his room. I went to my room where we do sleep with other children. I couldn't think. I don't know. Like, I did not know what to do at that point, and I was confused. No. I tried my best to avoid him throughout that day. So the next day, we all went to church. I was in church, and he was on the altar preaching. I wasn't seeing him. Everything oh. I was saying was the things he was saying into my head. Mm -hmm. They keep sounding. They keep coming back, but I was just on my own. I was just there. Nobody knew what I was going through. We came back to the house that Sunday. I tried my possible best to avoid him. And then on Monday, he sent for me. Oh, no. Mm. On Monday, mm. he sent for me. Mm. That the children came. Ah, Daddy, um, love, Auntie Lovett, Daddy is calling you. I, what will I tell the children? If I tell them to go and tell him that I'm not coming, what will I be explaining to them? So I just stood up and I went to meet him. He was like, are you still thinking? I'm sure you've made up your mind about this whole thing that he doesn't know what I'm thinking about. After all, it's not like I'm a virgin. That's after all, that if I just agree, whatever I wanted, he will give me. Is it house? What is it that he cannot give me? Money. I'm planning for my wedding. He was going to give me the best wedding in Portacourt. Was going to do this. He started saying so many things. I was just looking at him. When he finished talking, I asked him, I said, I am aware that if I agree to this, it is going to be a hidden relationship, right? He said, yes. I said, fine. In this situation, what if, what if I get pregnant? He said, is he a child that he won't let me get pregnant? I said, it's not about being a child. Pregnancy can happen. So if you're saying you won't let me, it's the same thing that you have to use protection, whatever will happen, if at all anything will happen. Mm -hmm. He said, but how do I expect him to go and get protection? What will he tell people he wants to use it for? Imagine if him going outside. I said, if that is the case, I will buy it for you. I asked him for money. He gave me 10,000 Naira cash that day. And then I went out. I went to everyday supermarket. And I bought him a pack of um, Durex. Yes. Durex, that's Came funny. back to the house. Yes. Came back to the house. Gave it to him. He was just looking at me. And I left. So the next day, he was actually still asking. I have thought about the whole thing because honestly, it's not like I haven't been in a relationship. But someone like him, who he is, mm. the threat, mm. the fear. I don't, I was, I was not aware if he had a dirty lifestyle I did not know before now. Mm. So I did not know what to be scared of. I didn't know, like my head was full. So when people are asking, did he rape you? So it wasn't a rape. So when I thought about this whole thing, I said, okay. I told him, fine, if this is what you want, no problem. But on one condition, I don't ever want to get pregnant. He said he has heard me. I should stop preaching. That Do I even see him like someone who will not be able to take care of his child? If anybody get pregnant for him? I said, okay, thank God you're the one saying this. So the relationship started. It wasn't once, it wasn't twice. He kept demanding for sex. 
So he had his way. Yes, he had his way. And at each single time, he refuses to use the protection. Are you serious? And I made sure I always reminded him. I said, I ask you to use protection and you're always refusing. He said, I am in his house and I cannot call the shots. I can't tell him what to do in his house. So he called the shots and he decides what happened. And I kept telling him, don't get me pregnant and expect me to go for abortion because I will not. Yeah. I told him this. He said, I should stop preaching. I said, no problem. He kept having his way. Now, this when whole said, thing started in March. When you, kept, when you say he kept having his way, what do, what do you mean by that? When I mean that, he kept demanding for sex. Was he? Yes. Did it happen? Did he sleep with you? Did he have sex with you? And it happened. Yes. He kept sleeping with me without what protection. Okay. Yes. So, this was between March and April. Mm. May, June. Okay, it was in May. I this whole thing, I still could not like the whole every you know when stuff like this are happening, everything just happens so fast. Mm. So, meanwhile, the guy I was supposed to marry was still planning for the marriage. Mm. So, I approached Apostle, and I told him, I said, please. You are the general overseer of OPM, and I'm having an affair with you. And the person who wants to marry me is an usher in the church. I don't think I can do this anymore. I don't want to put myself in the middle. I don't want to go ahead with this marriage whatsoever. At least let me know I'm dealing with one thing. Yes. I don't want to go ahead with the marriage. He said, no, if you go ahead with the marriage, what if the guy did not agree? What if people start suspecting? I said, suspect what? Mm. I don't want to go ahead with the marriage. This guy is an usher in your church. What do you think? So after the whole end of the day, after this whole affair and everything, I get married to this guy, and then I'll go to church and I'll be looking at the both of you. I don't want to put myself in this. He refused. So I couldn't keep quiet about it. I went to church that week. I met this guy. I told him, please, I don't want to go ahead with this marriage. I'm calling it off. Yes. The guy fled up and said, one man was deceiving me. Somebody wants to take me away from him. He's not going to let me go. He has prayed. God told him and his wife, this and I was saying stuff. Mm. I left him because he started ranting and was shouting and was talking. I left him. This was in church. So before I knew it, the guy has gone to marriage committee, our assistant pastor, reported to so many people that he doesn't know who is trying to take me away from him because people knew us in the church. So they called me that day in Apostle's office. And Apostle started asking me why I wanted to call off the marriage in front of people. He was not the one asking me why I wanted to call off the marriage. So I just told him, I don't want to marry the guy again. I don't want to go ahead with it. Because I knew at that time I couldn't say anything. So people, he was now that I have told you, you have already told me this thing in the house. And I told you, don't worry, go ahead with the marriage. I'll set you up. I'll set the guy up. I'll do this. You will be okay. This one that I said that it's not about setting us up. Hold I don't on, want to hold marry on. Hold this on. Do guy. Want, hold on. They want to take your water. They want like take the world. No, sir, I'm fine. Good. Okay, like, your light is off. It's it's getting dark. There's no light. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So I is told it, him, it to I just don't the, want to marry. Is it possible to face towards the, the window so your face can be shown? Sorry, sir, you say? Is it possible to face towards the window so your light, your face can be showing? Okay. Okay, good. So... I told him, I don't want to go ahead with this marriage. He now said, in front of people, people were there in his office. He now mm. said, I shouldn't worry about it. I'm just a child. That love grows. So when we get married after a while, that love will grow. I said, it's not about love. I personally do not want this marriage again. Mm. He refused and I was objecting to it. So people started saying, that why am I being disobedient? Why am I disobeying apostle that I'm ungrateful? Apostle picked me up, brushed me up, and now Apostle is talking, and I cannot 
obey him. The whole people in the church started saying I was ungrateful, I was a riffraff, I was a rat to even stand in front of apostle and disobey him and stuff like that. And I left the office. That meeting was closed. We came back to the house, he was like, eh, that he's sorry. That he saw the way people were talking to me, that he's sorry. I didn't answer him. That wasn't it. He kept asking for the sex. So, after that day in church, I kept saying it, I don't want to marry this guy. His sisters, his workers, everyone in the compound that time, even in church, knew that Lover said she did not want to marry, but that he was asking her to marry. Now, the problem is nobody knew what I was actually going through. Nobody knew mm. what was the problem. Mm. And I couldn't have told anybody. Okay, imagine now this whole story is out. People still don't want to believe. So imagine if I had said it then, who would have believed me? Right, right. Nobody would have believed me. So I just kept quiet. He started paying for stuff for the marriage. He started doing this, that. So after a point, I told him, if I ever go ahead with this marriage, I'm doing it to please you and nothing more. Mm. He said he knew. So I met this guy. After I had told this guy severally, I don't want this marriage. So I called this guy. I said, please, can you come to Apostle's house? I want to see you. The guy came to his house. And I told him, I said, I don't want to marry you. Please. I might not be able to tell you the problem or what the issue is. Mm. But if you can help me and forget about this whole marriage of a thing, maybe later in the future, I will tell you what the problem is. But not right he, away. Were you pregnant there that time you were telling him? No, as of, as of this time, this was around May, June. I was not pregnant. Okay. So... This guy still refused. So at that point, I got angry and I told him, if I go ahead with this marriage, it is not because I love you. It's not because I want to marry you. I'm going ahead with this marriage because I'm just trying to please Apostle. I said this to the guy. He was just shaking his head. And then I still went ahead to tell him that even after this marriage, whatever you see in this marriage, you'll take it. He said, yes, he will take it. I said, fine. Say you want to marry it. Oh, yeah, let us go. And that was it. I never said anything. I know so many people, his sisters tried to talk to him, tried to talk to Apostle to cancel the marriage. He refused. So the marriage was fixed 20th July. The wedding was fixed 20th July 2019. He paid for everything. Who paid? He did. did even while the wedding preparation was still going on, he was still demanding for sex. The, the apostle or the husband? Yes. No, not. I've never, I'd never even visited the guy. So you didn't have any premarital sex with the guy before marriage? Never. No, no. Okay. Not so, anyone at all. I did not visit him. The only time I visited him was when we were planning for this marriage and his mother came around. Okay. So he called that his mother was around. So to fulfill all righteousness now, I had to go and see his mother. Right. I went, I greeted the woman, so I spent some time and then I left. Right. Yes. Now, if somebody would say, who knows if you people actually did anything. Now, this guy was living in a safe content. So a safe content is just the room, toilet and kitchen. So the mother was there. And when I was done seeing the mother, I left mm. back to Apostle's house. And he was aware I went to see the guy's mother. Mm. Okay. So now the wedding was fixed, 20th July. Everything was done. Fast forward to the wedding. We all went for the wedding. I wasn't happy. Normally, the OPM church that I know, on the wedding morning, they will conduct a pregnancy test for all the bride, because most of the time they do um, wedding five, 10 people at a time. So I don't know, I wouldn't say, and I don't want to assume mm -hmm. that very morning on that wedding day, a pregnancy test was not conducted. So we went ahead with the wedding on the 20th of July and we came back. And I was like, it's almost, it's, Actually, a month loss. 
and I haven't seen my period. So the next day was a Sunday. I went to church. Now, the thing is this, my next period was supposed to be 19, 20th of July. And 20th was my wedding. And it, there was nothing. So the next day was on a Sunday, 21st. I went to church, 12, 1 p.m., nothing. So I actually knew something is actually wrong. So I went to the church medical department. I have a friend that worked there. Her name is Love. Love who? Yes. Love who? I asked her, I said, please, if people have a test strip, she said, Love. yes. Love. She said, okay, can you give me one? She Hold did. It. Hold on, what's her full name? Um, Love Godwin Ihotu. Okay. What is her position in this? Yes. She worked, she was a nurse there. She was a nurse in the medical department there. Yes. So I got um, the test strip and I went to do the pregnancy test. Mm. Now, the wedding was yesterday, Saturday. The next day was the Sunday, which I did this test and it was in the church and it came out positive. Mm. And I was shocked because I know I never had anything to do with that guy until the wedding night. Did they give you... Did they give you a result of the test? The test was a urine pregnancy test. Yeah, did they give you a result like after the test? No, I said I did it myself. Oh, oh okay, I see, I see. Yes, it, I, it was a test trip. It was right. a test trip. Right. I did myself. So I left that day. The next morning, I went to the hospital. I said, I called him. I told him I was coming to his house. He said, okay, because I told him there was a problem and that I was coming to his house. He mm. said, okay, this was on Monday morning, 22nd. Mm. Now, apostle that I know, if you tell him something, you have to prove what you're saying. So that morning before I went to his house, I went to a hospital and I did a pregnancy test mm. with blood. And it still came out positive. I went to his um, house. Mm. And what I did, I told him there was a problem and I gave him the pregnancy results. You gave it to him directly? Yes, I gave it to him directly. He saw it and was like, what is this? I said, look at it. He started smiling, but he didn't say anything. Okay, he now hold, said, hold okay, on, hold, hold on. on. Hold on. He hold now on. said, hold on. You went to another, he went to a lab to do the blood test. Yes. What's I went to a lab. lab. What's the name of the lab? I actually can't remember, but I have that test result with me. Okay. That particular okay. test result, I have it with me, and I still remember the hospital address. Okay, good. Yes. So I gave it to him. He saw it and was like, okay, you know what? Hold on. We will talk. Let me attend to my visitors. When he was done, he now called me. It was in his golden palo. We went to his palo. And then he started asking me that, what are we going to do? I said, we don't have to do anything. What are we going to do? This was your plan and you've succeeded. So why are you asking me what we are going to do? I told you I won't go for abortion. So you shouldn't even bring that idea. He said, what of your mother-in-law? I said, she's there. She's in the village. And I said, won't she know? I said, I don't know. He now said, but then you have to abort it. I said, I will not. He said that to you that you should Yes, he said I should abort it. I told him I will not abort it. I made it clear to you, use protection, but you refuse. So this is the consequences of it, and I will not abort the pregnancy. Okay, come to even think of it. Day before yesterday was my wedding, and you're asking me to go for an abortion two days later. What if I don't get pregnant again? He said, don't worry. After the abortion, I'll pray for you. I said, I don't want. He said that to you? Yes. I said, I don't want. And that was it. I left him because he wanted to make an issue out of it. You have to abort it. What if you now have the baby and people get to know? I said, are you even thinking about my own life at all? What if something happens to me? He said, hey, after all, you're not the first. Hey, so many people do, must do that. Is it you that will not come and die? I didn't answer him. I just walked out and I left him. 
came back to my house. You're not the I first. Me, allegedly, he has been doing that. Probably, as of then, I left his house. That was on a Monday night. I left his house, go back to my house. The day was over. I went to sleep. The next day was 23rd, which was Tuesday. When I woke up in the morning, as usual, picked up my phone, I saw an alert, a hundred thousand naira. So who? if I am to trust my bank statements, there will be an alert from him, hundred thousand naira okay. to my account. And he also sent me a WhatsApp message. Mm. I have sent you money for the abortion, so you can go and do it. I said, mm. okay, I don't hear. I didn't say any other thing to him. Later that day, he was calling me to ask me if I did it. I said, yes. I didn't want to talk to him. I just left. So, and that was it. A week passed, two weeks passed. So sometimes I was just thinking, I was like, what's the point of keeping the pregnancy away from him? He has to know. He has to be there. He has to get involved. Right. So I reached out to him and I told him, I wanted to tell you something. He said, let him guess. I said, okay. He said, you did not have the abortion. I said, fine, you know, I did not do it. Mm. And I said, okay, that, oh, thank God. Eh, I, since I sent you that money, I've not been at peace. I've not done this. I've not done that. Eh, what if he's a baby boy? I was just thinking, have you gone for antenatal? I said, no. He said, okay, I'll send you money. You have to do it. And I started antenatal. He was supportive and all. Mm. After the marriage, I left his house. And he continued the sex with someone else. How do you know about that? Fine. We were all in the house. And he had already he had already started having sex with other girls before I left the house. So we all know about this. How do you know? Can you talk to me how you got to know? A we bit. talk, we, we talk to ourselves. We we all know ourselves and we talk to ourselves. The name, the, what's the name of the person? There was Joy Joshua. There was Favor. And they live there. There was him. other people. Yes. It wasn't one. Yes. So I started attending Antinatal and everything. He was supportive. Everything was going on well. And I was with my husband. So there was a day I was having problem. I think I was having abdominal pain and I actually passed out in the house. Uh, my husband took me to the hospital. So it was the doctor in the hospital that confirmed to my husband that I was seven weeks pregnant. Before now, he wasn't aware I was pregnant. The doctor confirmed in the hospital to my husband I was seven weeks pregnant. My husband was like, ah, doctor, we just married two, three weeks ago. Which one are you saying? Uh, seven weeks, and I've not tortured except for the. Hold on, hold on. If if this off, if it caught, um, I'll call. I'll call again. Send you a link, but continue, okay? Okay, sir. Mm. So that was it. After that day, my husband found out I was pregnant. He came back to the house and called the medical woman. I said used to visit that boy in hospital and complained to her. Now, this woman did not know what was going on. The woman now called a postal <laughs> that, see what Lovett husband is saying, mm. that she doesn't know what is wrong with all these girls that could see her gotten pregnant before the wedding or this one, this one, this one. A person now said, don't worry, I will settle the both of them. Don't worry, don't worry, I will settle the both of them. Mm. Before, the next day, I was back to the house. When I got to the house, Apostle called me. Now, where is my husband? I said, he's in the house. Say, give him phone. He started shouting for him. Why have you go and call uh, uh, Mrs. Ezendibo that your wife is, uh, is pregnant? Must you tell everybody your problem? Must you tell everybody this? Can't you keep your problem to yourself? And the man, the guy was like, that day that he just find out and the thing was a shock to him. So he needed to tell somebody about to say, okay, if, you, if your wife does anything, you want to report it to anybody, report it to me. Mm -hmm. Don't start reporting it to someone else. 
this guy respects him so much and would never ever think that he was actually behind it. So he told him, okay, daddy. And that was it. The guy never talks. If any issue arises, he will call him. That this is what my wife is doing. No, my wife is this. My wife will not allow me to touch her. My wife will not do this. You say, don't worry, I will talk to her. You know, she's pregnant, take it easy with it. Stuff like that. And the guy was buying it. Mm. So, three months into the pregnancy, someone else got pregnant for him. Someone else? Yes. Someone by, else. By who? What's the name of George Joshua. George Joshua. Where is she now? She's currently in Lagos. Does she have the baby? Yeah, she has the baby. She's in Lagos with the baby? Yes. Do you have her contact? I don't have a contact, but currently she, she has been on my DM these few days. Okay, no, I'm asking you. No, sir. All, the, all, all, the, all you're telling me now, I'm going to get this matter before I move on. No problem, sir. No problem. You understand? Because if this is the outside of the story, you're telling me, right? Yes. I'm yes. Uh, because that's what you call character defamation. Yes. Character defamation is when you say something, that is not true. Yes. So if the person now go to court to sue you, you just have to prove beyond reasonable fact that this is not true. Okay. If you have evidence, the person will lose the case. So I think I, I know he might be, he might have intelligent people around him, but they should tell him the truth. So we're not we're not doing chess play here. You understand? Yes, sir. Go, go, ahead, go on, go on. Don't be scared. Go. So, on. So that was it. And then um, three months into the pregnancy, someone else actually got pregnant for him. And there he came and started telling, telling me that someone told him that I was having an affair with my ex-boyfriend when I was in his house so that the pregnancy is not his own, that he is not responsible, so that I should not come and give him another man's child and expect him to take care of the baby. I was like, where is that information coming from? I was not in any relationship before I came to your house. The person I was with at that time, we had broken up. When I came to your house, I was not with anybody. So where is that kind of information coming from? He said he got it from a reliable source. I said, anyway, that is not my problem because I know it is a lie. He said, okay, I should bear it at the back of my mind that he will not be taking care of me and the pregnancy again until I deliver. And then we go for a DNA test. Beautiful. I said, thank God there is even a DNA test. At least you will get to know the truth. And I actually thought it was a joke. He refused taking responsibility for the pregnancy. You call him, he won't answer you. You send him a message, he will not respond. Once in two months, he will send you 50,000. You can stay and say, probably by the time I have gotten angry and talk and talk and talk and talk and cry, maybe sometimes after getting angry and begging him, I will now stop getting angry. I will start begging him. That's when he will send money. So at that point, it was as if I was now forcing him to take responsibility. He kept telling me he wasn't, he doesn't want to invest in another man's child. And at that point, after a while, I got into depression. So many things started happening throughout the pregnancy. I was always alone. I couldn't tell anybody. Every single time I told him, if you continue with this, I'll be forced to tell somebody about it. He said, eh, if you tell anybody about this thing, he will threaten me. You don't know you're dealing with something that will consume you and your whole family. He will do this. He will do that. Where was your husband then? He was still there. He was in the house. But I never told him anything. Are you still with your husband now? No. We've not been together for two years and some months now. Why did he leave? He sent him to Dubai. Because okay. at some point, I threatened him. I said, if you don't take care of this child, I will tell Chinedu the truth and I will tell my family the truth. So he didn't want me telling Chinedu because I told him I don't want, I even after the marriage, I kept telling him I don't want this marriage. Chinedu, Chinedu, Mweke. Okay. You still have his contacts? 
contacts? Yes, I have his contacts. Okay. Yes. So after everything, this thing was going on, the pregnancy, the depression, everything. I just mm. went to even when I was seven months pregnant, Sorry. I reached out to him. I needed to go buy things for the pregnancy. He should give me money. He said, How much is the money? I told him four hundred thousand. He said, For what? That what if it was a palm wine tapa that got me pregnant? That will I go and ask them to give me four hundred thousand? That the only money he can give me is hundred thousand, and if I'm not taking it, I should leave it. And I did not take any money from him. While I was in his house, I had a lot of money. So that is the money that has been keeping me. I've been surviving on those money. Outside the ones that once in a while, if he choose to send you money, he will send it. So. Fast forward to 2020, March, I had the child. 21st March. How old is this child I, now? It's currently three years and three months. Okay. So fast forward to 2020, March 21st, I had the baby. He requested for a picture. I sent him a picture and he was like, oh, um, okay, I'm sending you 100,000 now. Go and buy a C put inside the room where the baby will be sleeping. I don't want him to sweat till I do DNA test. Do you have, do you still have the account number he's using to send his money? I have, yes, it's still the same account on the 21st of March, 2020 in the evening. So if we call for a settlement of account, we are going to see this. this yes, this. you will see it, 100,000 on 21st of March. Okay. Yes. So... Well, the same phone is not the same phone. Is this the same phone you're using right now? No, it's not the same phone I'm using right now. Okay. Yes. So after that day, I still did not answer him. I went to the house. Even after the baby was born, he was actually his very carbon copy. He mm -hmm. still refused to take responsibility. The lockdown came. It was during that lockdown, you did not get to go out. That was the first time he willingly after he denied the pregnancy, he willingly sent me money. So probably, let me say, he felt pity for the child and all. So he willingly sent me money. I think he sent about um, 150000 in the space of one month. Mm. He kept sending money, sending money. After the lockdown, he went back to his normal way. So sometimes you call him, cry, you need money for this, you need money for that. It will take you like five, six days to be requesting for one thing before he will now agree to send. You can call him, okay, please, I need to take this baby to the hospital. I need money. He will say, eh, take the baby to the hospital first. When they finish, I will pay. Which hospital will attend to you without money first? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I remember so many of his members, I will go to them, I will beg them. They should help me and talk to him. He will refuse. Some of them will say, no, 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 they don't want to get involved. But they are aware that what happened. They are aware. They know the truth. They are aware. So many of them will tell me they don't want to get involved. They don't want to do this. So many things like that. So that's being said. This thing kept happening, kept happening. 2021, he sent Chinedu outside. He kept telling me he would do a DNA test. He would do a DNA test. The baby was one year, no DNA test. Two years, no DNA test. He kept promising, nothing came up. We were still beating around the bush today. I would, at some point, I told him, you have to do this DNA test. If not, I will tell people about it. He said nobody can force him to do a DNA test. That he can only do it when his spirit tells him to do it. That nobody can force him to do a DNA test. So at that point, I knew probably he needed more people to talk to him. Now, the DPO yes. that, that handled this case in Alu police station, I yes. went to this DPO. I complained to him. So he's aware? DPO yes, he's aware. Okay. The DPO confronted him. He accepted that the child is his own, but that his problem is that I am asking him to marry me. I said, marry you, okay? Marry who? Me. That Have everybody you ever Sorry, sir. Have you ever said he should marry you? Never, ever. I have never. Why will I tell him to marry me when everybody already knows I was married as of that time? Right, right, right. right. Yes. 
that and the DPO said he told him that but the only thing I said is that I want him to take responsibility. If he's doubting paternity, he should go for a DNA test. That he doesn't yes. think it will take him anything to do this thing. So why is he making it an issue? He kept saying, okay, he will do it, he will do it. The DPO now asked him, I would like to bring this girl to your house and I'll come with her. Let her use her mouth and tell you what her problem is. Me and the DPO went to his house. You and got to his house. house. Yes, we went to his house. We got to his house. We got to his parlor and we were in a meeting. If I talk, if I want to talk, what has been happening? He will start telling me I am being ungrateful that I should see those children he sent to Turkey, he sent to Cyprus, he did this, he do this one. I said, that is not why we are here. That is not why we are here. I'm talking about your child and you're talking about people you sent outside. How does these two issues relate? You say, you see? You see why I'm saying she's ungrateful? You see why I'm saying she's ungrateful? So we couldn't understand. At some point, he was talking. I talked back at him, and the DPO was like, don't talk back at him. Allow him to talk. So I kept quiet. He kept saying I was ungrateful. I was this. This is the reason why he doesn't. He doesn't want to take care of the boy. He doesn't want to do this. After all, I'm married. Now, why can't I just let my husband take responsibility? I say, who does that? Someone else, father, and their child, and someone else. As at this time, my husband was already in Dubai. Oh, okay. And okay. was still not aware of the truth. Hmm. So, the DPO now, he, I now told him, what you're talking about is not why we are here. The DPO now said, this girl wants to start a business so she can move on with her life. Exactly. You have, maybe you fix some amount of money for the boys upkeep give her money to start business so that she can go and live her life you know say eh, so that what kind of business do i want i said i would love to set up a unisex salon both male and female he said okay um i should make a list and go and give the welfare department the dpo say how does welfare come into this matter this is you and her. Whatever you want to do, keep it between you and her. Right. Welfare coming inside tomorrow, sir. You will say she went to report you. So keep it between you and her. He said, okay, in that case, unisex alone, how much is it? 500,000. I said 500,000 for a unisex alone. Is it for the equipment? Is it for the shop? Or which one? He said, please, please, please. He cannot do more than that. He cannot do. In fact, he has visitors. Before we know it, he called his um, PA to call the other visitors that were waiting for him. And we were discharged like that. And we left. We left his house. The DPO said he would get to the end of that matter. He kept calling him. At some point, he said, if I cannot take 500,000, he will give 800. I said, I am not taking. I am telling you to set up a standard business for me. So I can focus on my life and forget about this whole child or no child if yeah. tomorrow i have need financial need for this child and you're not available i can as well from the business take exactly. care of the child without having to call you exactly. i am tired it's been three years i just want to move on and live my life he will just be looking at me that he i don't know what i'm talking about so the dpo kept pressurizing him he now said Did he? so at some point i told the dpo sir i'll take this thing to public home. This was last year. Mm. I told him, sir, I will take this thing to last public. Year when? Last year, January. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, viewers. We're not seeing her face very well because it's already late. She's okay. in Nigeria while I'm in the stage. Go ahead. Because of time so I told him, sir, I will take this thing to the media because I am tired of trying to talk to this man all by myself. He did not say anything he was just like when he heard me there he was scared you now say eh, okay tell her and eh, eh, i'll give her one million the people said it is still too small exactly. so we kept talking and talking and talking at the end of the day dpo said um okay if you can just make it two million let us see what she can do out of the money he said okay two million two million outside that two million era nothing again 
if it's giving me the two million naira, I should be paying the baby school fees from there. I should be feeding the child from there. In fact, I should take the child, take care of the child from the two million. Did the PO say, sir, what do you mean? Two million naira to take care of a child and start up a standard so, business. The DPO is is interceding between yes. The, yes. Okay. yes. The DPO was always calling him and talking to him. He was saying, in fact, that that is what he can give me last. I should go and take care of the child with the money. I said, if you're giving me 200, 2 million naira to set up a standard unisex saloon, at the same time, pay the child's school fees, feed him from there. I myself, I have needs. So will it, I, will I still be doing that from the money? And at the end of the year, I will still be paying the shop rent. He said, okay, in that case, he will be paying the shop rent. In that case, he will be paying the shop rent. The DPO can testify to this. To some point, the truth is that I wanted to walk away. I wanted to go and live my life because the drama was too much. No. I was in, in a middle. Everything was always happening. If you, Sometimes I can send him a message. He will read it and finish. He will not answer you. You keep repeating the same message for three, four days before he will say anything. So I said, fine, two million. So long as you'll be paying rent now, yearly. Let me just see what I can do out of it, move on with my life, get one or two skills. Anyhow it is, I'll start up from there. So he asked me to call his agent to go and rent the shop. He called his agent, gave the agent money to go and rent a shop, and the shop was rented. The shop we got, based on what I wanted to start, you know, if you're doing a unisex saloon in Niger the Nigerian kind of setup, you need to use one part for where they braid women's hair, one side for where they barb men's hair, pedicure, stuff like that. So I wanted to include everything. Mm -hmm. So I needed at least a bit bigger space. Oh. Yes. So I told his agent, who also looked for a place that was at least close to something I was looking for, and then the landlord said he can only take a year and six months. Out of the two million, and what he paid for was a year. Out of the two million naira, I needed to add um, 250,000 to the 500,000 naira he get for the shop to pay for a year and six months. So I started buying equipment. Equipment are expensive. All right. Some stuff can be 200, 180. I got stuff. I set up the shop. His agent saw the shop I set up. Now, this thing I'm telling you, now, this two million era did not come at once. No. The, yes, the two million era came two times, three months apart. It did not come directly to my account. It went through the DPO's account. Mm. So he can testify to this. Okay. The shop was rented in February. Which year? Yes. March, April was when he brought the first one million. Which year? Meanwhile, 20, was it last year? Yes, last year. 2022. 2022. The shop was rented in February, March, April was when he brought the first one million. Now, two months has gone from the shop. The first one million, I used it in buying equipment and other things. It was still wasn't enough. I put it up in the shop. And then I reached out to him. I've used the one million and I've gotten some of the things. Please, the remaining one million. He said, okay, hold on, I'll give you. The first one million came in April. May, June was when the second one million era came. The DPO can testify to this. Now, this same June was when his wife came back. After he sent the one million era. I bought a few things I could bought, bought hairs. Now, this money was also for the baby's upkeep, his school fees. So mm -hmm. there's no way I will carry all of them and put in the business. Right. So about 1.5 went into the shop. I kept 500,000. We had things we needed in the house, daily upkeep, school fees. I have my younger sister living with me, and she's going to school. 
Mm. I pay her transport every day. So now, his wife came back that same June. And his wife heard about the whole thing. I don't know who she heard it from. She made her investigation. They gave her my contact. And she called me. The wife and called, she called me. Yes, she called me. And started asking me things that she has already oh, known wife. the truth. But that she wants to hear the truth from me. And What's she expects the... me to tell her the truth. What's the name of the wife? Mkechinyere. Uh, Mkechinyere who? Yes, Mkechinyere, Chibuzo. Okay. She called me and said that she has already known everything, but that she wants me to tell her the truth because she has already prayed to God and that she has already told herself that she has heard all of us that are pregnant for her husband. We did this, we did that. So any of us that choose to tell her the truth, she will forgive the person. But that anybody will lie to her, anybody that will lie to her or anything, that the person will have God to contend with. Mm. The truth is that Apostle was not protecting me. He wasn't protecting my child. He did not care. Mm. So I had no reason hiding what has been happening. I told his wife the truth. I told her everything. Right. She now said that, according to what she has been hearing, that um, she had my child resemble her husband very well. I said I wouldn't know. She now said, okay, can she call me on a video call to see the baby? She had asked for my child's picture. I said, I'm sorry, I can't send his picture to you. Good he said, you. okay, can she call me on a video call to see him? I said, fine. She called me on WhatsApp, video call. She did? Yes, she did call me. Last year? Yes, last year, July. Yes, June, July. She saw my child. While she was on this video call, she saw my child. She was taking screenshots. How after do you know? The call, now, after the call, because she has been asking her husband, and he has been lying that he doesn't have any child with me. That the only person he has a child with is with joy. That he doesn't have a child with me. So now I believe she actually took those screenshots to prove to her husband that she talked to me. Yes. And that this is the child you have been denying. So she took the screenshot and then went ahead to send the screenshot to her husband. I oh. talked to Love It. This one, that one. It was on a Sunday night. I see. Now, before this day. I have not been talking to Apostle for like two, three weeks. I have not sent him a message. He has not sent me a message. So I was surprised. It was around this time, eight o'clock like this. Mm. For the, uh, after the morning, the wife called me in the morning. The evening of that same Sunday, he sent me a message. And the message read, I have received your message. Expect mine. That was the message he sent to me. Mm. That was it. And then I was scared. Anybody in my shoe would be scared. Right. Now, people started calling me. Please, I wouldn't want to call this person's name because he doesn't want to get involved. Family, see, you need to make a matter here, okay? Okay. Because what we're doing, we're going to do a high-profile investigation. Okay. You get justice, I promise you. Okay? okay. Whatever it takes, so, you get justice. So this person called me and said, are you having issues with Apostle? I said, no, what happened? He said, Apostle called him. Who's the person? And asked for my address, his agent, because that is the only person that knows my ad that knows where I stay. What is his name? Mr. Lucky. Lucky who? Yes, Lucky Adi. Okay. Because he actually did not know what was going on, and yeah. it was in the night. So he just called and was like, are you having issues with Apostle? I said, no, sir, what happened? He said uh -uh, that he was surprised. Apostle called him and was, send me Lovett's address. Where is she staying? And the way he was sounded, that he did not like it. Mm. I said, oh, I don't know. Because I also did not want to start talking to him mm. or telling him anything. I said, okay, thank you. Immediately, I called Apostle's lawyer. Before this time, I had gone to his lawyer. My name who? By name, Barrister Mrs. Dokubo. Okay. Barrister Mrs. Nko Dokubo. You have all these people's number, all these people's number, right? 
I have a contact. I want every contact at the end of this um, live video. Okay, okay, sir. So I contacted, I said, ma, so so person just called me and said Apostle is asking him for my address. She mm. was like, what is wrong with this man? Hey, my this God. man has already spoiled so many things. He will not stay one place. What is this problem? Oh That's what she God. said. You know what? My dear, leave that house immediately. Leave that house immediately. Mm. This thing I'm telling you was after eight to nine. I oh, had to God carry my her. son, carry my child, my, my sister, her. and we left the house. May God bless her. We left the house that day. And then she called one of the people that was involved in this matter. Because when I reported to her, she went to the church board to, re to report to the church board. The barrister? Yes. Beautiful. She reported to the church board. So mm -hmm. they have been holding meeting and looking for a way to make him go for a DNA test. Mm -hmm. According to his barrister, he has always refused that he doesn't want to go for a DNA test. They said, no. The barrister said, he told him, come. If these children are saying you got them pregnant and you are saying you did not, prove yourself wrong. Mm. And the only way you can do that is to get a DNA test. Spread on. So they had to force him, force him. This thing I'm telling you started all in June. It took them July, August, September, October, November to be able to force this man to go for a DNA test. Which year? Five months. Last year, 2022. At the end of the... Oh, network. Are you there in a bomb? Love it. Network issue from her side. Let's wait for her to reconnect. Okay. At some point, his wife wanted to make an issue out of the whole matter. They will keep talking to her, calming her down and everything. So by November, the barrister called me. Does your son have a passport? I said, no. He said, okay, you have to get him a passport. We have finally decided we are going for a DNA test. I said, passport, are we going outside the country? She said, eh, your guy say, you know, one do I'm for Nigeria now. He said, everybody know I'm for Nigeria. So that we will be going to Ghana for a DNA test. I was like, okay. They contacted someone. I went and got ECOWAS passports. The person does passport for people from Apostle himself. So Apostle said I should go to the guy to get me the passport. So the guy got me an ECOWAS passport for my son. I have my own passport already. So on the 20th, a flight, the flight was booked. And Mm -hmm. Jenna says, who and who is going? She said, you and your son, herself, Apostle, his wife, Joy, her baby, the other girl by name, Nana, and her child. I say, uh -uh, everybody is going. She said, yes. That since Apostle is denying, so them two need to know the truth. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. On the 29th of November last year, we left Nigeria to Ghana. Mm. And the DNA test was conducted in Blue Blueprint DNA Center, Ghana. Hold on, hold on. Blueprint DNA Center. DNA Center, Ghana. Yes, yes. Okay, do you know the particular states in Ghana? It should be in Accra, so it was Accra we went to. Okay, good. Yes. It's even on Google, that was how we find out, because we did not know any DNA center in Ghana before we went there. So we okay. found out on Google, yes. So we got there. The other girl, you say her name is, uh, the other girl, you say her name is Joy. Yes, Joy Joshua. Okay. Nana who? I don't know. I think it should be Jessica Nwoko or Nana Nwoko. I've never met her before. I only saw her at the DNA test um, place. Okay. I didn't even see herself. It was his lawyer that told me about her. Okay. Yes. I've not known about her. It was at the DNA test I got to know about her. Hmm. So we went there. The DNA test sample were taken. 
everything. Mine was taken. And we never got to meet each other. Mm. We got to Ghana. Me and my son went first mm. to get the sample and went back to our hotel. Mm. The next day, they called the other girl, Joy, to come okay. with her child also. Okay. To get their sample and went back. Then the next day, the other girl came with her child. So they never let us meet ourselves. Right, right. Yes. So when we were finished taking the sample, they said the results will be ready in two weeks' time. Mm. We left. We left. We left. Um, we left Ghana on the third of December, and came back to Nigeria. So everybody were fingers crossed, waiting for um, the results. Mm. Now, with the date they gave us, fourteen fifteenth of December, mm. the results should be ready. Yes. So, on the sixteenth. I called his lawyer. Mm. I greeted her. I said, Ma, please, I know the DNA, the results must have been sent to you. Can I ask? Network. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you. Let's talk. Come on, see. Can you hear me? Oh, um, she's having a network issue. You know, she's in Nigeria. Okay. Hello, sir. She's back. Yes, I can hear you, my doctor. Go ahead. Okay. So we came back to Nigeria and I called. I said, Ma, um, my son's on. What is the result? She mm. said, Why are you asking? You're the only person that is calling to ask. Others did not ask. Why are you not the one asking? I said, Ma, I'm asking because my child was being re rejected. He was denied that he was not his son. Mm. Outside that fact, I followed, I was a part of that DNA test, and it was my son's test. So wow. I have the right to know the results. Absolutely. She said, you people are just ungrateful. Eh? You people are ungrateful. This man has been using church money, spending it on you people. People don't want to calm down. I say, ma, we think on sign result I'm asking for. Who was saying this? And, uh, Who was saying this? I don't know. People just keep calling me. Just, just stop. Just got the call. Don't and stop yeah. picking calls. They will track. They're I tracking your number. No, I didn't pick it. I dropped it. But okay, listen. The moment listen. the call comes in, the network will get um this thing. Listen, that they are, they might be tracking your number to know where you are. Okay. Okay, sir. Don't pick anybody's call. Don't listen to anybody. Don't okay, wait sir. Wait for further instruction from me. Okay. Go ahead. Hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -mm. I think she's having a talk issue that I'm calling her. So let's wait for her. Let's wait for her. Hello, sir. Okay, I'm here. Okay, I just I just blocked the number because it's actually one particular number. Okay, good. So she started abusing me and everything. I was asking her that I'm only asking for the results. She's saying, in fact, that she's not supposed to look. I should stop talking to her anyhow. She's not my mate. She's old enough to be my mother. This one, that one. she was just talking and talking and talking. I had to drop the call. I had to drop the call. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Very well, very well. Okay, so I dropped the call because I wasn't understanding where the abuse was coming from. And then she never sent me the results she never said anything about it. She never told me what it was. And this was December 16th, 17th. Mm. So after that one, she keep calling. I will call them. So now the result is out. What are you doing about it? She will say they will call for meeting. They will do this. They will call for meeting. When they call for meeting, they will invite all of us that they want to settle this whole matter once and for all. 
so that once the elders gather, they will call all of us for a meeting and that they will settle the matter, which is what I was waiting for. December, January, February, March, nothing was done. So I got the lawyer. My lawyer wrote to Apostle, and Apostle called his lawyer. His lawyer now reached out to my own lawyer. Two of them had a meeting. So they now agreed that everybody were going to have a meeting. And this meeting was scheduled to 23rd of March this year. Hello, sir. I'm with you. I'm here. Okay. So the meeting was on the 23rd of March. We went. We got there. They talked and talked. And then they now asked me what happened. Just like I explained here, I also explained to them. I also explained to them. Okay. Meanwhile, I forgot something. Last year, when his wife, everything was just going, after he started threatening me, at some point I left Portacourt. I got to my place at Uyo to stay. He so was threatening aunt, you? Yes, he was threatening me. When you said threatening, what, what, what happened? As of the time, he was asking for my address. So I couldn't stay in the house anymore. Okay. So I needed to change location and all those things because since the person he asked for my address had told him he did not know where I was staying, okay. he would have gotten maybe got more people to start looking for me. So mm. I left for Tarkot. Okay. When I left for Tarkot that last year, I got to my uncle's place in Rio to stay. Okay. And then my auntie said, we have to go to FIDA. We have to go report to FIDA and let them call him. So I, if lawyer called me one of those days I was in Rio, we were talking, I told Amma, at this point, I am tired. Since the church doesn't want to do anything about it, I will go to FIDA. She was mm -hmm. like, no, it hasn't gotten to that. So I said, I'm just telling you that I will go to FIDA. So mm -hmm. I believe she called him to tell him that I wanted to go, I will be going to FIDA. The next day, as early as 6 a.m., he called me. After the night, me and his lawyer talked. And I told her I was going to feed her. The next morning, he called me and was telling me that it hasn't gotten to that now that I should calm down. I said, what do you mean by calm down? Number one, you're threatening me. You're not taking your responsibility. You're not taking care of the child. And you expect me to just sit down and watch you. When I talk, you abuse me. So which one is calm down? It's not about calming down. It's about you taking action. He now said, okay, in that case, that he'll be giving the child. 100k monthly. Who said, said that? 100k for Apostle. Apostle who? Yes, Apostle Chibuzo. Okay. That he'll be giving the child 100k monthly. Mm. I should go and get a nanny for the baby. Mm. A nanny that will be taking care of the baby while I'm going to the shop. I say, the shop you're even talking about. The last time you sent money, I just finished buying things for that shop and you started threatening me. I locked the shop and left. This was already July. That mm. shop rent was paid since April. Mm. So imagine how long I have locked that shop because of all these things that you're doing. He said, eh, you don't have to leave now. You can come back. I cannot hurt you. Eh, I cannot hurt you. You are with my child. If I kill you now, what will I tell the baby tomorrow? Mm. I say, me, I don't trust you. If you can be wicked to your own child, who again can't you do anything to? Yeah. You know, say no, that he cannot hurt me, or that he has told me now he'll be giving the baby 100k monthly. Then I should get a nanny, he'll be paying the nanny um, 30,000. When we come back, School, eh? that he'll be paying the nanny, he'll be paying school fees, he'll be paying school bus and everything. I say, anyway, I've heard what you said. For me, I cannot trust you because this is how you used to talk. At the end of the day, when it's time to do the thing, you expect me to start begging you again. He said, no, that this time he means it. I should call his agent to go and get me accommodation, to go and do this, to go and do that. Okay, I said, no problem now because me, I really wanted peace. I don't want to be beating around the bush with him. My son was lacking attention from his side. Mm. He's never given. 
Even during his second birthday, I called him. I said, please, in a week time, it is his birthday. Oh, please, can you just send money? Even if it's to buy cake and buy stuff and go and share it for his classmates because him too used to bring birthday pack to the house. So it will be bad that on his own birthday, he did not give right. to his classmates. Apostle told me that if that boy did not do birthday, will somebody die? That what is it to birthday? That must he do birthday? Mm. That thing, like, that thing got to me. It got to me. I felt really bad mm. about it. Is so I mother? stopped disturbing him about the birthday. I forgot about it. He has, this boy is three years. He has never for once celebrated his birthday. Hey! He what has was... never, he has never. What month was he born? He was born in March. Oh. He has never for hmm. Okay, continue. So that was it. I forgot about the birthday. I let him be. So he now said he would do this. So we came back to Portacourt. Yes, he got an accommodation, a one bedroom flat. Who got accommodation? He sent his agent, Apostle. He sent his agent to get me an accommodation. Mm. I told the agent because as of, as at that time I did not I was not I did not trust anybody. I because I know money can do anything. I told mm. the agent that please don't worry. Just collect him the money and give me. I'll go and get a house for myself. Because I do not want anybody as of that last state till now knowing you where I am seen. Beautiful. So the agent understood and said, okay, no problem. He reached out to him, okay, we have seen an accommodation. He sent the money to the agent who gave me the money. How much? 600,000. What, what, yes. what, what, what dates? This was, oh, good. This should be around um, last year. Okay, school just started that time. Last year, September. Okay. Yes. It was around the start of first term, mm. which is always September. So that was the time. Okay. So 600000 to get a one-bedroom flat. He sent it to the agent. I also got a school. I got different school. I sent him the, um, the amount. He said I should get different school. And sent him how much it was to register. There was a school I went to, Bereton Montessori. It's one of the good schools in Portacourt. They told me new intake and everything was about 500,000, but family pay was 200,000. I knew he would never choose that one, but I still got it. I still collected their list. I went to three different schools. The least school I gave him was. New intake, 200,000. And um, yearly, uh, timely pay, 150,000. And that was the one he chose. That was the one he chose. We got the accommodation. I went back to my shop, opened the shop as of that last year, September. I got the boy in school. We started living. Everything was okay. Now, you say you'll be giving the boy 100K. You'll be paying school bus, which is 40,000. You'll be paying a nanny monthly, 30000 So when you look at this money now, it's 170000 And then I still told him we needed to pay bills. I was not even bothered about getting money for myself. I was just looking at how I can work in the shop and be getting money for myself. Seeing the 100 k was coming, I was ready to do with that. To just live my life. He now said, okay, he now said, okay, he will just round up everything, including bills, to make it 200K per month. I said, no problem. That particular month, that particular September, what he sent for upkeep was 100,000. That until September ending is when he will start paying the other one, the other bills. No issues. We started leaving and everything. When that September ending ended in October, 
it took me and his lawyer to call him before he sent that money. We went back to the normal way again. Month has ended. Third, fourth, he has not sent. I called him. I sent message. Nothing. I reached out to his lawyer. Sometimes if I'm talking to the lawyer, I will tell her that if I'm tired, I will come, I will let people know about this thing I'm going through. Mm. At a point, his lawyer told me that, what am I even saying? That let her tell me that if this thing comes out to the public, then nobody will believe me. That except his wife comes out to say, to support me, that that is when people will believe because she is the wife. I said, I am the one in the shoe. I am the one with the child. So Whoa. why won't people believe me? She said that she has told me, oh, she has told me that the man has been saying, if this thing comes out on social media, that he will just leave and nobody will see him again. This was what his lawyer told me. I said, ma, that is not what we are talking about right now. Why I called you is to help me and call him to do what he said he would do. Month has ended. Today is seven, six, seven, eight. He has not sent the upkeep. The lawyer started calling him and calling before he now sent the money. So this is always the problem. Month will end. He will wait for you to start begging him. Sometimes I will just leave it. You start calling and calling and calling. Meanwhile, while you're calling him and begging him, he is already posting 200 people leaving Nigeria to be in the Republic for scholarship. And you're here begging for upkeep for your child. While you're begging him, you'll be calling him. He will busy your call. He is posting. The, 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 the blessed, privileged student, their mother was this, their father was this. Because of the love I have for humanity, I have taken them. They are now living in my house. You're doing this, you're doing that. And your child is there begging you for food. Oh. Which mother will accept such thing? Mm -hmm. Which mother will accept it? It's too much. Let it be that he doesn't have the money. It's understandable. Not when he has it, he's giving it to the public and his child doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to go to him giving the child attention. He has never done it. So I will not mention it because I know no matter what you do, he will not do it. What name do you give this child? Good luck. Good luck who? Chibuzo. That's the name he's, he bears in school. Good luck, Chibuzo. Is he aware? He is aware, yes. Who asked you to give, that, who asked you to give the, the, the name to the child? Good luck, Chibuzo. I gave him Chibuzo because I don't think there's any other name a child should answer outside his father's name. Okay. Thank you. Continue. So that was why I gave him the name. Continue. Yes. So this matter went on like that. The 200K he said he'll be sending. Month to end. Send the money. We'll talk and talk and talk and talk. So we just keep happening like once month is ending, if we are approaching 26, 27, I will start being scared. Who knows how many days I will talk to this man before he will send money? Who knows mm -hmm. what I, I will start constructing message I will send to him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will result to me insulting him before he will send money. If I insult him, he will insult me back. He will abuse me. He will call me names. Sometimes mm -hmm. I will tell him, you're not ashamed that your child is begging you for you money, will, for food. You will tell yes, him I, this? Yes, I do tell him. I told him you're not a you phone. Yes. I have most of this chat. I told him you're not ashamed that your child is begging you for food. Yes, you're in public doing this and doing that. There was a time I told him that nobody would want to see your life behind the camera. He said, I'm stupid. I'm an ingrate. I'm this. But it is the truth. So at the end of the day now, that money he said you'll be sending for upkeep has been like that it's always an issue before the money will come so it makes me now keep coming back to him every month and i keep coming back to him so now fast forward to when they called this meeting we went for the meeting the first day we had the meeting they asked me what happened i told them everything they who all called the meeting the eh? who called the meeting the church board Okay, the church board is aware of what is happening. They know everything. They were the one that organized for the DNA test. Can you mention sure, you know, any of the church body? No. 
eh, um, sa sobas mat ofe um, sa sobas mat ofe Mr. Matt Ofe. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Matt Ofe, Mr. Sobas, uh, and Sobas, Barisa, who? Uh, Uloko. I think I will send you their name. I think I have their name because they all sent their name to my lawyer. Okay, good. So I have their name, yes. There were about seven of them or six of them in that meeting. Mm. I went with my grandfather and my lawyer. Mm. So they asked me, after everything in the meeting, they now asked me, so what do you want? Mm. I said, this is what I want. A non-rented accommodation for the child. Mm. Because I do not want to always come back yearly asking apostle for to come and pay rent for the child. Mm. So I want a non-rented apartment for him, accommodation for him. Mm. I need money for his education. Probably... I would go and open a bank account on his name. The money should be put there. Mm. So he doesn't feel like he's giving me the money mm. for his education. Now, when we went to that meeting, before the meeting started, his lawyer stood up and said that this meeting is being held as a result of the DNA test that was conducted in November 2022 to assess him if Lovina's child belongs to Apostle Chibuzo, as she allegedly claimed. And that the result came in, and that the result said it is positive that he is the father. The lawyer said so. Yes, his lawyer said so. So they now asked me, what do you want? That was what she said before the meeting started. Mm. So we now, I now told them what I want. They should put the money in his account for his education and then also put some money for his upkeep. Right. They are all fathers and grandparents, so they know what it takes to raise a child. Right. And that I can also ask for money for to start up to put in my business. Right. Because I locked that shop up for a long time and I've missed a good part of the shop rent. Right. And I need to meet up. And I will need money to add to it yeah. so that if this is done i will just go my way live my life never to come back to a apostle if my child grows up i want to look for his father he's a man mm. which i will not stop him mm. they said okay they have heard me they rescheduled the meeting till the next week how old are we you eh? how old are you i'm 25 now you're very smart you're very very smart I love that. So, okay. thank you, sir. So, they now said they rescheduled the meeting that we should come back the next week. We mm -hmm. went back the next week. They now said they were now talking and talking and talking, and they now said so that they had my request as of the last time. So, that they cannot start looking for a house to buy right now for the boy, or start mm -hmm. doing this, or start doing that, or going to open a bank account. That right now they want to sum up everything and give me in cash, Do, including the house, the upkeep, the business, the education and everything. I said, okay, it was still okay. So to my greatest shock, I was told they would give me 5 million naira to go away with the child and never to come back to Apostle. Mm. This 5 million naira should cover his accommodation, his education, his upkeep, including the business. Out of the shock, I was like, is this a joke? Mm. Because me, I was shocked. I was up because I wanted to know if they were joking or they were pulling my leg. Right. But I, when I asked that person, I got to find out they were serious. One of them even said, um, that what do I mean by, is this a joke? That how much is rent? I can get a one room or a self content, 200,000 and pay for five years, which is one million naira. Deposit one million naira in accounts for the boys' education. Use the remaining one and start a business. From the profit of the business, I will pay in the boys' school fees and be making money from it. And I was like, so you have people expect me to take five million naira and go and be living with this boy, and I'll be watching his father doing charity more than that for people. He will, be, he will even be building houses for people, but he cannot give his child a house. I told them I will not take it. 
I am not taking it. If they wanted the mother to go to court, the mother should go to court. I won't take the money. Right. One of them, by name is Amat Ofe, now said, you people are dealing with someone's life. This is a child's life. Exactly. My bless dear. You. Yes, that was his comment. He said, this is a child's life. You know what? I'm going to add 5 million naira from my pocket to you to make it 10 million naira. They fled up against him. They were angry. Now, what does he mean by that? What is he trying to say? What is he trying to prove? So mm -hmm. are they now wicked? They fled up against him. This man, this man was angry to the point that tears came out of his eyes. Was, was apostle? Like that. Was apostle there? Yes. Apostle was not there. He never attended the meeting. Mm. So I told them I won't take the money. So when the man now said he was going to add money to make it 10 million naira, my sole aim was to walk away because the mess was too much. It was taking a good part of my life and I wanted to walk away. Mm. I wanted to walk away because my child was already three years as of that much. I didn't know he's getting smart, he's learning new things. So I don't want him growing into this whole environment. So I needed to walk away. When he said 10 million, I said, okay, sir. 10 million, I will take it because I was thinking with 10 million naira, if I take it, I can probably get some, maybe a working visa, get my son and myself maybe to Canada or to UK and start a whole life afresh. Mm. So I accepted the 10 million naira. They now said it has not finished. Things I have accepted the 10 million naira, I have to sign a document. I said I would sign. They asked my lawyer, to go and draft a document. The meeting was over. My lawyer went and drafted a document that briefed what all this whole story I have been saying. My yeah. lawyer just briefed it, I think about three pages, putting his full name and my full name and that they have confirmed that he is the biological father of the child. And they were giving me 10 million naira to go away with the child. But it does not affect the child's relationship with his father in the future. Mm. And this agreement was sent to them and they rejected it. They said it was too outright, mm. that they will amend it. They now went and drafted their own agreement, changing his name from Chibuzo Gift Tinyere to Chibuzo Nwankwo. Me, I don't know who is Chibuzo Nwankwo. <laughs> I do not have anything to do with Chibuzo Nwankwo. Yes. They changed his name to Chibuzo Nwankwo and the narrative they put up in their, their agreement, they made it look like Chibuzo Nwankwo was a church member mm. and that I left my marriage to go and have an affair with Chibuzo Nwankwo, which resulted to a child. So when the church had shown and offered me financial assistance of 10 million naira to go away with my child. Mm. Honestly, I still did not mind with the narrative they came up with. So I signed the document. I told them all I wanted was to walk away because personally, I was tired. I wanted to walk away because I know that whatever he continued doing, I was doing one day, it will still come out. Wow. I signed the document. And then I requested for one thing. I said, this document I am signing, I need a copy of it. They say, for what? What do you need it for? You don't need it. I said, no, I need it. They said, they will never give it to me. I said, fine. If you people will not give me a copy of a document that is even speaking against me, mm. even after I signed it just to walk away, if you people will not give me a copy, I will not take the money. You people can keep the money. And I did not take that money. And that was the end of that issue. When I came back, I thought of ways to do, I thought of what to do. I told my lawyer, we need to go to court, take the matter to court. My lawyer said I should pay, my lawyer drafted an agreement to send to court, but he said I should pay 100,000 for filing fee. I said, sir, I don't get 100,000 to pay. He kind of made it mandatory, I have to pay before we go to court. So I left him aside. That was when I had to contact uh, uh, Dr. Charles. I sent him a DM on Facebook explaining my plight. So he reached out. I was like, send me evidence, which I did. He asked for my contact and called me. I told him everything. 
He said, I will get back to you in the morning. He reached out to Apostle, and Apostle accepted to everything Mr. Tao said. But how did you know accept it? Because this is what Mr. Tao said. Okay. After Apostle, Charles, who? Before, before this whole meeting, Apostle had blocked Dr. me Charles, on WhatsApp. Dr. Charles, who? Dr. Charles, how was it? Okay. So before this whole meeting of 18, after the DNA test, Apostle had blocked me on WhatsApp. Okay. So when I found out he blocked me, what was I doing with his contact? I also blocked him. So when Mr. Charles reached out and said he has reached out to Apostle and that he is surprised that he is even accepting it, that he accepted the child is his own, this one and everything, but that he wants Apostle to call me because he wants to come in, that he wants to create peace where the child can have both parents Beautiful. because the child is innocent. I say thank you, sir. This is what I've always wanted. I've always wanted my child to have his father. Mm. No matter what Apostle has done to me, I will not block the child from having him or having access to him. He said, okay. He will reach out to Apostle for Apostle to call me. Apostle refused to call me. So Mr. Charles put up a conference call between me and Apostle. And, and him. He said, oh. And him, yes. So the three of us. So we talked in that um, meeting, conference call. Apostle continued saying that, okay, since I did not take the 10 million naira, he will continue with the 200,000. I told him, no, the 200,000, the money that comes to us is 100,000. The other 100,000 goes for bills, and you are aware. And this money was actually because, according to you, you were not sure if the child was your own. So at least now that the DNSS has been done and confirmed, things should change. He said he doesn't have money. He cannot change anything. He can only be paying 200000 I told him I won't take that. He kept saying it, but that we should do the 200000 to After some time, he can increase it. So Mr. Charles was like, okay, if this is what he's saying, let us give him two, three months to see what he will come out with. Let's just follow him with the 200k. I said, fine, no problem. Do you know that that same month, by the end of the month, it even took Mr. Tao to call him before that money was sent. Mm. That money was finally sent on the 7th or 8th of the next month after that month ended. It took Mr. Tao again to come into the matter before the money was sent. Hmm. So at that point, why was sent I to the account or Dr. Charles' account? It was sent to my account. Okay, and you have the statement of account. If we can, we yes. can see that. Yes. So by this time, when it happened again, even when Dr. Charles was involved, I made up my mind that the attention I needed him to give to the child, I do not want it anymore. Hmm. Certainly for this monthly upkeep i do not want it anymore because the monthly upkeep will keep taking me back to him even if i decide to delete his number and move on with my life at the end of the day just because i need upkeep for my child i will still have to reach out to him so yeah. i do not i accepted the fact that he was not interested in being in the child's life yeah. so i reached out to him i said please whether you people give me a copy of the document or not, I need the 10 million naira. I want to move out. I want to move ahead. I want to take my child far away, start a life because my mental health is taking the best part of me. I also reached out to Mr. Charles. I said, sir, please, I don't think I can continue with the upkeep. Mm -hmm. I don't want it anymore. I will take the 10 million. Even if they don't give me the copy, let them keep it. I will take it. Apostle responded and said, the 10 million naira was not in its position as it was in the position of the church board. You understand? So he will reach out to them. I said, fine. This was in April. I'll be May. It was in April. Towards the ending of April was when I reached out to him about this. Do you know that? And I told him, okay, while you're talking to these people to bring the 10 million naira, I want to go and get a passport for my son 
because he doesn't have international passport. What he has is ECOWAS. Mm. So I needed an international passport. He said I should reach out to the same promise, the one who did the ECOWAS. Mm. I reached out to the guy. Now, this guy doesn't know anything. This guy now said, so, okay, which name? Send me your son's um, details. I went back to our boss. I said, promise is asking me for a name to use. What name am I using? He said, okay, that means you have to go and do it by yourself and you use my name. I said, okay, fine. If I have to use my name, I am not married to you. So I am going there as a single mother. So if I am using your name for your passport, I will need your document. Mm -hmm. He said it's not possible. He cannot give me his document. In that case, let me go and use my name for the boy. I said, how do you expect me to use my name for a child that the father is alive? Mm. He said, anyway, there's nothing he can do about it. He cannot risk the destiny of millions of children because of me, because of one child, that I should go and use my name. After a lot of argument, that was not the goal. My goal was to leave. Mm. My goal was to leave. I went and I used my name to do a passport for my son. When the passport was ready, I came back. I told the apostle, his passport is ready. Please, the money. He refused to respond. That was, that that... was when, since that was in June last month. Okay, last month, okay. That was when this happy boys issue came out. Mm. So after three days, he did not respond to that message. I felt maybe he was going through some kind of hard time because of that happy boys issue. Mm. So I sent him a message and I was like, I don't know if you're actually going through something. You're not responding to my message. At least say something. You don't have to be silent. Mm. He still did not respond. I went back again. I say, it's like you cannot talk. I said the passport is ready. Please, the money, I want to go. I don't want the upkeep again. Right. He still did not answer me. So I have been waiting. Two weeks after he did not answer me, I reached, I said, I told him, I, I reached out to Mr. Charles. I said, sir, I am tired. I am tired. I'm tired. Mr. Charles said, you're the one wearing the shoe and you know where it is itching. If you need to get help, get the help you need. Things I've tried going to court, it did not work. I met people that were close to him. It did not work. Coming to the media was my last option. So I took that step. Who step did you take? I needed to go to the media, but starting from my page would not give me, would not make it go viral. So I reached out to Gist Lover. I sent Gist Lover, yes. I sent him a message on Instagram. Sent, he asked for evidence. I sent him the little I can. I sent him my son's picture. And then he went ahead to post it. And that was when it went viral. Okay. And then I knew that people still needed more evidence. So I started posting on my page. Mm, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, what do you want? No, the thing is, this, thing, this whole thing came out on the media for like five days now. People who are close to him have been reaching out. Asking me to stop. Some even were begging me if I can make a video to say that what I'm saying is a lie that they will say to me. Mm. I told them at this, I have given him enough time to do the right thing, he refused. Right. So I have come out with my truth and I cannot take it back. Right. If you people are asking for settlement, you have to first come out to the media. Whatever settlement has to be done has to be done in the media. And the reason for this settlement has to be in the media. If I have to stop, it will be done in the media. Right. So, so what do you think, want? What do you want? I want to go straight to the point. What do you want? What Tell I just what want, want, honestly, I need help. Just give so, one minute. Summarize so what you want so that uh, we work towards so, this. I just, I want to walk away from from all these things. I want to walk away from all these things. I don't know if I should say I want him to take care of the child. I don't know how that will be done because according to what I heard, he has not been rich for the past three days. 
He has not been what? Out, he has not been rich. He also has not reached out to anybody. Oh, okay. Blinds are all off. So I really want to get away. I really want to come out of all this whole mess. And I need help to be able to provide for my child and his upkeep so I can just go away. Okay. When you say go away, go to where? When I say, when I say go away, if Listen, possibly if... Listen, hold on, hold on. Do you want to take, do you want to sip a, cup, a glass of water? Sorry, want, sir, what did you... Do you want to drink water? If I want to take what? Do you want to drink water? No, I'm okay, I'm fine. You're good, okay. Now, I want you to put yourself, you know, comport yourself very well. Tell me, what do you want with all of these cases now? Because I want you to cease fire now. Stop posting until I get back to you, okay? Stop posting. And like I told you, we're gonna, I'm going to reach out to... Um, if his number is not going, I will send people to go. Um, I will first of all reach out to the church member, the board members. They will go with the lawyer. I will invite uh, Dr. Um, Barrister... The barrister I told you about, you know, he will take over this matter for me, you know. So now I need to know, I don't want to look and see if I'm telling you what, what to do. You have to tell me what you want, and I'll work towards that because I'm here to help you. Um, looking at your history as an orphan, you have nobody to talk to. And I was looking at your picture last time, you know, when you were living there, how plumpy you are, how fresh you look, you know. Compared to you, your, your state now, you know, uh, I mean, there's nobody that would like his or her daughter to be treated in the way you were being treated. That's a fact. I'm not happy. Your story is, is touchy. I'll be here holding myself, you know, from crying. There's nobody that will hear this story that will not have pity on you. So now go straight to the point. Just be honest. Tell me what do you want? I would, honestly speaking, if I can get help, I would love to leave the country with the child. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if it's what you want, consider it done. Okay. Um, okay. I'd like to speak with your your grandfather. Do you say okay. your grandfather, right? So yes, someone sir. have to give go ahead of that to help you with that, and I'm gonna do it for you, okay? okay. If that's yes, what you want, um, and we we'll make sure that the child is being taken care of properly. That's the most important thing, and to okay. make sure you come back to yourself, okay? Yes. So cease fire, stop posting. Give me, uh, this is uh, today is a new um today is a Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So give me from now to the end of this week. You hear from me. Okay? Okay, sir. Is that okay by you? Okay, sir. It's okay. Thank you very send much. Me, send me all the evidences you just mentioned here. Okay, sir. All the evidences. The names of people, their phone numbers. Um, okay. Try and get your... You can, do you have an app? What bank do you use? I use an um, access bank. Okay, do you have an app you can use to print your statement of accounts? If you don't I have, can, if you don't I have, can have go, you can go, to the, bank. go, to, the bank. go yeah. to the bank, get it for me, get me the statement of account. I'm going to send you money. You send me your account number, I'll send you money so I can go to the bank tomorrow. Um, um, ask them to ask them that they should give you a statement of account from 2000 and 2000. 2020 to 2023. Okay. Okay, sir. So that cost you money. Give them their email. You should send it to your email so you'll be able to forward it to me. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yes, um, sir. um hold on. Um I want that to be done tomorrow. Tomorrow. Then um uh, hold on, let me check something. Okay, 
I'm going um I'm going not to be done tomorrow. I'm gonna to send you some money because they will ask you to pay. You know, you have to pay for pages. I don't know how much it costs. Okay. Okay, sir. Then you, you get that for me tomorrow. Send it. Like I said, calm down. Okay. okay Those sir. people are threatening you, don't reply. I learned that some people calling you, threatening you, don't reply. Don't pick any call you don't know. Do not okay. click on any link. They say, oh, look at what Apostle say. If you click on that link, they will hack your phone. Or hack your okay. phone. <laughs> Be okay. quiet. Pretend as if nothing is happening. Do you have some food at home to eat? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, good. So be happy. Look for anything that will make you feel happy. Make yourself happy. Relax. Calm yourself down as if nothing has happened. Okay, allow God to fight this battle for us. Okay, okay. thank you so much for coming up today to tell us what happened. Like I said, all you just said now is still allegation. You know, we verify never for us to be able to go into this case. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. You have any question for me? I don't think I have anyone right now. Okay, feel free to reach out if you want to ask questions or want to know what we are doing or you have not heard from me. Feel free to reach out, okay? Okay, sir. All right, good night. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, I said, uh, um, I think, you know how you can get a, you can get a, you can get, you can get her number for me. Get her number? <laughs> Ma, I wouldn't want to involve myself with Joy. That's the no, truth. No, no, because... she's not that uh, anything I'm doing with you. Have you just a very highly confidential something? Are you hearing me now? If I want, hello? Yes, I'm here. If I wanted to be angry or flat off, I will not be talking with you calmly like this. You understand me? Uh. Because uh, somebody that, did you, did you hear the story of me and that man? He never, I said, like I said, he doesn't like talking about you. I've tried to ask I, um, most of the time, according to what he told us once mm -hmm. like that, he just said, um, that you left and he has always been trying for you to come back. Do you know that? Let me tell you the truth. If I was in your shoes with everything that has happened, I will be pained and I will be angry. Mm -hmm. In my little way, when I was in that house, before anything, all these things started happening. Ma, I have tried, mm -hmm. I have tried to talk to daddy to let you come back. He keeps saying you're the one that doesn't want to come back. Because now, I let me take because it. I now, heard let me I heard the story. He said, um, um, um they said his sisters were always saying he's an occultic man, he's this, he's that, and that um he has his sisters were always having problems with you and now he has money and he sent you out. I'm like how could your sisters were not there? Your wife was always there with you. And now your money and your wife is not here, but your sisters are here. Daddy, how could you do something like this? Say, so, eh, I should forget. I should leave that side. I should leave that side. Okay, we want to do something. Daddy, when is mommy coming back? He's like, okay, okay. Don't worry. She'll come back this uh, princess birthday. She'll come back. She'll come back. I'll make sure she's, she'll come back. And then you're, you're not there. Daddy, why, why did mommy not come back? Leave her. She doesn't want to come back. You know, stuff like that. At the point, you have no, to let I don't, him I don't, need, I don't need to tell you. Let me tell you this. The truth is that I applied for residency. Eh? Okay. And because I applied for residency, when it was time to give us residency, COVID came. So that COVID that came slowed down everything. Mm -hmm. And he is the one that applied for the residency. We didn't have any problem. Though. It was that residency that kept me. I came over there. Nothing else. I married Apostle. You know when I married Apostle, we normally sleep on the ground. We have nothing. When I married Apostle, I'm the one that pays our rent. I'm oh. the one that feeds him. Yes. The first rent we paid when I married him, I paid the rent. 
I'm the one, I'm the one that walk. I was walking, I was teaching. It was my salary. The first thing they put in that copy and in the way of the branch, it was my salary that they used to put the very thing in that church. And do you think that God is happy with all these things that happened? <sighs> do you think that God is happy with girls that slept with him? That is why I wasn't bothered. Because God told me, you see, joy, just watch out what will be the end of joy. Watch out what will be her end. I have prayed some bad prayers, and God told me that all the prayers I prayed for all the girls that slept to him, that I should watch out and see what will happen to them. The only one that will be saved is the one that will come to me and tell me that she is sorry for sleeping with him. And do restitution, just tell me what happened and tell me that she is sorry. That, that is the only person that will be saved from my prayer. I never offended that man for one day. I never walked him for one day. But he did this. And he said that God is happy. He said that people should watch out. Ma, Except now that you are confessing, and I can say that you don't, you are remorseful. But you see people like Joy. Joy has sealed her, her generation forever. Okay, what can Joy now come out with her? What is she hiding? How long is she going to hide? Nothing. That's just, that's just, that's just the truth. How long is she going to hide? She's going to hide forever. Ma, because let, I let told me. Uh, there's something I want to tell you now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you, okay, I believe that you've tested poverty before. Eh? I know, I believe that you have tested poverty before. Yes, I know. Okay, ma. Then as a child, let's say a child of 14, 15, living with her parents, and they hardly eat two square meals a day. Okay. And the next day, they see themselves in a post house. Okay. And then the next thing that's presented in front of them is, I want to sleep with you. I'll give your mommy 500000 to go and start a business. How does that okay. sound, ma'am? How does it sound? I, I, under, I understand. To, I understand. to a child and who barely sees 2,000 naira. On their own. I'm, I'm, I want okay, you to. No. I want you to sleep with me. I'll give. Okay, I'll no. buy let, it. Let, let, okay. let me answer you. Let me answer you. Let me answer you. Eh? Okay. A situation like this, you know, the two days you are talking, I've not raised my voice for yes, you. I yes. was not angry because I understood your situation. Okay. But somebody like that, joy, that went to my to get pregnant because she wants to stay there. Do you think that the same way I talk to you now is the same way I'm going to handle her case? Is that what you think? No, I know it's, it's not the same. Okay, because I know that you are taking advantage of. Was she taking advantage of? No. No. She wanted it. She went for it. Do you know that they say Joy was using I am attack on him? Joy was going to Juju. That's what almost everybody said. Even Favor says the same thing. I don't know if Favor knows something, but she doesn't want to tell me. But she said that no matter what Joy is doing with that man, I should forget it, that Joy is using something. Because Joy was using Kayam Mata. They said Joy would rub Kayam Mata on the tongue, on her, on her vagina, on her breast. And she would go and be sleeping with my husband with Kayam Mata. Mm, you see me, the truth is that no matter what I have tested ever since I was born, I know what poverty is like. Even if they put me today in a castle, I will never because of where I am and I want to remain there forever. Somebody owns that place and I know that. I know what it feels to take what belongs to someone else, honestly. I never, that, I never plan that, to George, get... George will, go, George will go naked on the street. Mark my word. God in heaven knows that. I never plan to get pregnant for daddy, but when it happened, honestly, and as it stands now, I'll be honest with you. Even when I talked to Mrs. Dokubo, I told her, Ma, I have begged this man severally. I told him, I am not a lazy girl. I can go out there and walk and take care of myself. Please, all I just want is that you be a father to your son. That is it. I told her, okay. I have begged him. I said, don't give me anything I don't want. Even if... Love it. Love it. I'll help you, okay? 
I've heard you. I'm not going to save your number in this phone. I called you with. Are you hearing me? Okay. But I'm going to save your number. I will be calling you when I go back. Huh? Okay. I want to keep in close contact with you. Are you hearing me now? Yes. And I'm going to work with those elders you have spoken with. Okay? Okay. I'm going to work with them. Then you know that as long as that man did not marry you, that your child is not coming back to his house. I think you know that. How? That child cannot come back because he did not marry you. He can never claim that child. Even Joyce's child, none of your children are coming into the house. And that house is my house. But whether to settle you people, I will tell you to settle you people with your children. That is their culture. The culture in Oranko, as long as they do not marry you, the only one they know is me. And even he's smart, because when I heard about Joy, I told him, I said, if this thing is true, tell Joy to release the child to me and move on with her life. So that that child can get, get a good life. He told me that there is no child he has with, that he did not have any child with Joy. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because the culture is that none of you can act in our hands. There is no child born out of wedlock that comes back to that man's house. It doesn't happen. That is their culture. So at the end of the day, if maybe he accepted and you want to release that child to me, because you are such a nice person and you're good, I will say, okay, release the child to me. I will adopt the child from you and you will move on with your life. That is the best I can do for you. Without that, that child has no inheritance in what I have with him. Because I'm still legally married to him. And everything he has, it, 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 it goes to court. You don't see him. And my daughter. As a matter of fact, the senior brother has a son outside who is over 20 years now. Where is the boy could have come back. The boy is still there. So you people play the dangerous game. If I take him to court, he is finished. He will go to prison. Because he took advantage of children he's supposed to take care of. And I will not do that. If I take him to court, everything he has, I will take all. Even the judge, but I will not do that. Because I'm not that with them. So if you are ready, if I'm going to talk with this elder, maybe I have to take that side away from me and take him away to Canada, wherever I am. <laughs> if, if we do DNA, and that child is exactly his smile. That is why I have seen the picture of that child. Let me see the side face. But he said, no, no problem. <sighs> Um, um, uh, let me let me say something. Let me say something. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, it was never inten my intentions. Neither was it my plan. And that is why, and that is why I'm telling you the truth and the fact. No, I have heard what you said. I have heard mm -hmm. what you said. Because because you will not tell you people. Me and you know that you will never tell you people the truth. I think you know. It was never my intention to, neither was it my plan to get pregnant for your husband. Mm. And I'm just happy that I have been able to tell you the truth. And yes, yes, and thank you for that. I want to tell you that I'm really sorry. From my heart, I am sorry that what mm -hmm. happened happened. And I think this was just me. Um, being naive, or what do I call it here? This was just me being taken advantage of because I honestly did not have anybody to cry to. If I had my way, I would have left that house before, even without doing anything with him. God is my witness. That's who I am. 
Uh, I love it. Do you know that there are some girls that he did that and they left? They refused to speak with him. No. That's never been a person. They left because they had an abortion with him. If anybody tells you they left the house without sleeping with him, it's a lie. And I'm telling you what yeah, I know. Let me tell you, there was this little girl, the mom, he's in Dubai. I know her. I heard that this last girl that normally go five in five into his room, that the senior sister normally send them five into his room. There is nothing he did not try on that girl. That girl refused. Even the day the girl left, the girl has to lie that her grandmother is sick. Even they refused to give the girl transportation because the girl refused. And when the girl left, other girls started calling the girl, congratulating her for her standing her ground. Does she have parents? Hmm? The girl, does she have parents? Does she have what? Parents. She, she, the mom is a single parent. The mom is in the back. The mom is one of these people he sent to the boy. The girl is from Lava. I don't know about that. I've not heard. I don't know how their situation was. I'm telling you because I was, I think I was, he started this thing. He first started this thing with joy. Because why do I say he started? So all of the girls that came into that house, he slept with all of them. I wouldn't say all, but I, I would say 90%. 90% of them? Yes. Okay. My dear, I've given you an I've given you a tip of their culture. Because none of your children is recognized. Okay, ma'am. I've I've heard what you said, but at least this 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 has to do with my child too. So um That's why I'm that's why I'm telling you. I ask I say, what do you want? Now I'm giving you an option that I'm going to work with those elders. If you can hand that child, or if he will accept, accept so, because till tomorrow he's saying that he did not have any child with anybody. That anybody that come and this, this, this. If you if you hear what he is saying, it's not what I'm going to say here. You understand me? Because that he doesn't have any child with anybody. I'm still asking him, how many do you think? How many children do you have after? He doesn't have any child. He did not speak with anybody. That no body, no girl can come and stand and claim that he's stupid. Lazarus, thank God you people live in little You know, you know, you know, you know what? There's something I also need to tell you, ma'am. You might not want to take mm -hmm. your husband to court, but someone else will. Okay, go ahead. Someone else ahead. will. Not me. Who? I won't say. Who? Someone else will. And when this person would do, the person has like. A good evidence to send him to prison. Next thing, me and you now, woman. I would like to walk. I won't you say know. this because I am really sorry I had anything doing with your husband. But if I ever open my mouth to say anything to him, it will work. Honestly. Because your husband has done, like, he has done more than, more than he, he could bribe. He he has done more than he could bribe. If he has the mind to use money to entice children as little as 13, 14 to sleep with them, he deserves to rot in jail. Honestly, I am angry. Fine. Even if, even if, even if he would not claim my child, fine. I have never seen Anybody die because they do not have a father. Even if for my child is two years and four months, he has never been a father to him. He has never cared. He has never called to ask how he's doing, how he's faring. It's, it's a problem getting money from him to pay his school fees. There's no problem. And he has never died. He's still here with his body structure. He's still here eating. Even if I would need to go into prostitution to feed my child, I would do it. Even if he doesn't want yes. to be the father, he will not claim him. Yes. Fine yes. and yes. good. Yes. No that problem. Is why, that is why I say I'm going to work with you. Okay? No, ma'am. You didn't want me. I will not do that and I will not give out my child. I'm a mother. I, will, I want to raise my child. I want to have the right to raise my child. That's what I want. Your husband has asked me what I want. I told him, I do not need your money. I don't need anything from you. 
you are my son's father and the least i could ask is even if it is 200,000 per month for his upkeep but he has refused so fine if it will not if he will not claim him he's okay let me ask you let me ask you a question you are raising him as pa like if they ask you who is his father what will you tell people who else it is apostle tables or who else yes you know what i cannot continue protecting who is not protecting me i am protecting his interest i'm protecting his reputation i'm protecting his name but yes what has he done he keeps humiliating me there's nothing he has never that man has never said to me if i send you my tax with him ma'am you would you would come out and take him to court you would do the right thing why not send me this? you will hand over your husband i swear why you not send me the chat as an evidence when he start denying? If I, I should send you what? The chat, as you said, when, so that I will have no. evidence when he start denying. And those are things I cannot release. I will not. When the right time comes, I will, but not now. Okay, I'm now, sorry. you say now, and then, there was something you say. You say you will not take him to court, but that somebody will. Someone and else will. Even if I don't do it. Someone else will be able. Do you know what? Because he has slept with more than 50 girls. So many of them, he brought them all the way from hotels in Lagos. So many of them, he goes to Lagos, he goes to Abuja, he wants to have a rest. And then the next thing, he's disguising himself and he's in a hotel. He's already sleeping with girls and he's already bringing them back to the house. I, just, I don't want to talk. Oh. I don't want to talk. I have told him, he knows it already, I have told him I don't care. I don't care about you, but what I know is that the day he ever tries, maybe I, I went out like this, I came back, I yesterday I don't see my son for house. I've told him to bear it in his mind, he will be the only suspect I know. If I ever goes out and I come back without seeing my child, hi God, in heaven, will, he will know that, eh? You see orphans. I am an orphan. You see orphans, you don't treat them wrongly and expect God not to do something on their head. Your husband does not do not threatening to do. I am not stopping now. I cannot answer. If you don't answer. I have never wanted to say, I beg, don't go there. I've told her, go ahead and do. Or know that the standard <laughs> of See, you standard say that have a time date. If you put your, your standard everywhere, there is no pastor that there are many pastors that have scandal. Uh, Suleiman had his own scandal. There are persons that had his own scandal. Every even even had his own scandal. Everybody had a scandal. But the scandal did not close their door. If you put your scandal, you put it after the thing goes away. What next? What next? After that scandal, go re, 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 re. What next? I can decide if the scandal has become too much. I can come out in the public, come to the altar. Neither and Christ. I so, go to the members. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I did this and I've asked God to forgive me. And I've it. Mm -hmm. So I, I can correct with the members. Oh, I'm sorry. I did this. I will not even, I'm not ready to come to go and deny anything. I'll come up with I'm sorry. And uh, please, everybody forgive me. Nobody's about to see. Nobody's about to see. Oh, and that was it. Some people will leave. Yes. Why some people that love me will stay? The church will still go on. But now, will you still have access to that man? Because from that minute, the man will block you. You will absolutely not. Anything no. you want to benefit, you will not benefit. Yes, absolutely no.